Bobby Petrino's Cardinals were in here, it was a bull market for Louisville and Lamar Jackson. But Dino Babers and Syracuse have proven, just like a famous stockbroker in song, everything can change in a New York minute. Big time, the ACC opener and a top 15 team is in town in the Carrier Dome. Trying to stretch to the edge. What a hurdle by Jackson! Highlight real touchdown! Lamar Jackson does it again! This is hype! These two teams are ready. So much at stake here. Unbelievable. He has seized this national stage. Hello, Heisman Trophy. We got a new front runner. And the fifth ranked team of the country is in big time trouble. Investors, large and small, sought to get out of the market to sell at any price. Really struggling in this post Lamar Jackson era. Turns what would have been a nice win into a devastating loss. The actual numbers make it look worse than the great crash in 1929. Wide open. Nobody's going to catch him. It's an easy touchdown for Syracuse. The upset, home by the Orange. They defeat Clemson 27 to 24. First win against Florida State since 1966. Confidence and expectations on earnings were going even higher. That bell's been ringing a lot. The victory bell for the Orange. Buy or sell. You gotta buy this. Sell me out at any price. Couple weeks from the closing bell 2018, it is capital B buy for Syracuse. After back-to-back -back four and eight years for Dino Babers, but here come the Orange. Bobby Petrino, on the other hand, and Louisville. This is a team that does not lose much. 2009, the last losing season. They won't go to a bowl this year. And as we welcome you into the Carrier Dome, Jason Benetti, Kelly Stauffer, Olivia Decker downstairs. Question is, how did this happen? Well, for Louisville, to me, it's quite simple. Lamar Jackson is no longer there running Bobby Petrino's offense. And Lamar Jackson's immense talent covered up a multitude of shortcomings within that program and now they're being exposed. I think with Dino Babers in year three of that transformation at Syracuse, this is when you should see the results. You see it in the quarterback position with Eric Dungy's maturity. You see it on both sides of the line of scrimmage and things are coming together if you listen to Dino Babers exactly on time. This Syracuse team makes people here feel like Kevin Johnson and Donovan McNabb are hooking up. Minutes to kick off on Friday night. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. Syracuse University's football team in the top 15 in the college football playoff in part because of this guy, Eric Dungy, who has been an absolute warrior for this team, playing through a broken foot. And Dino Babers could not have been more complimentary of his quarterback, who did lose his job briefly this season, but got it back very quickly. Senior night at the Carrier Dome, and Dungy will see the ball second. Louisville loves to have the ball first, and the Cardinals get it here. Dino Babers, in his third year, has turned a reclamation project some people advised against taking over. 
into a superlative program as we are underway here in Syracuse. And Louisville will have the ball at the 15-yard line. A hall snowed under as we go downstairs to Olivia Decker. Well, Jason, Louisville will play both quarterbacks tonight, starting with Puma Pass for the first two series and then redshirt freshman Malik Cunningham for the next two. Now, both played in the Clemson loss last week, but Malik Cunningham had the better game. He had more yards in the air on fewer attempts and a rushing touchdown there at the end in that blowout loss. But what Coach Petrino is really liking from Cunningham is that he brings more fire. He's more of a vocal leader. I did see him before the game rallying players on both sides of the ball. So tonight both will get a chance and Coach Petrino will see who's hot. Yeah, the hot hand is the key, Kel. Yeah, no question. And pass certainly is a better passer, more arm talent. But Malik Cunningham brings the juice in the run game. And Louisville's going to have to be successful to some extent in that run game this evening. Penalty on the opening kickoff moves him back. And this run play gets to about the nine yard line. We'll see a lot of Hassan Hall, the freshman, but Puma Pass, the redshirt sophomore, taking over the throne for Lamar Jackson, and good luck with that. Yeah, you know? yeah, you're not going to live up to that, but Puma Pass, first of all, that's a fantastic name for a quarterback, but he's, he's coming along. He's getting through his progressions more quickly, and this is a pro-style West Coast offense that Bobby Petrino runs, and so you have to read progressions and get to the right guy quickly. Juwan is given name, Puma his nickname, and this is a drop. Mickey Crum, the tight end, put it on the turf, and it's third down. Yeah, Jason, we've seen a lot of that. We've seen a lot of dropped balls. We've seen a lot of running backs that aren't really creating their own shot when things aren't blocked properly. And quarterback, whoever it is, if it's Puma Pass or Malik Cunningham, they need help from the skilled guys around them. They call it the Loud House, third down and nine. Syracuse has been awesome third down defense-wise this year. Pass under siege, and he throws it away. Syracuse holds the line on the opening possession. Chris Slayton on the pursuit. And that is exactly Syracuse's defensive game plan. Brian Ward told us that if we can get to third down and a passing down we get exotic on third down we love our matchup our defensive line of scrimmage against the offensive line of Louisville that's completely underperformed this year and that's what we saw right there in that first series Sean Riley a guy that Dino Babers normally wouldn't take on a smaller receiver than he typically likes has been outstanding in the punt return game a lot of room here for Riley and he puts it on the turf Riley fumbles on the return. Louisville got there first and will pick up the bodies to see if the Cardinals held on. And Louisville celebrates the game's first turnover. And Riley got this quickly. Hit it exactly like he's supposed to do. Try to make the first man miss and get as much as you can. And then it's just about ball security. And Syracuse has been fabulous at the turnover takeaway turnaround this year. They were minus 12 a year ago. They're plus 12 now. And Riley puts that one on the carpet. Scoop Bradshaw down as they're going to take a look at him. Syracuse gives it away at least for the moment. Deja food. The eerie feeling you're having the same food at every group event. Because you are. But now, there's a cure. I got tacos. Tacos. Whatever your occasion, mix things up with 12 delicious tacos in one box. Taco Bell Party Packs. Party food will never be the same again. Emerge restored. Replenished. Fortified. Emerge every day with Emergency, packed with B vitamins, electrolytes, antioxidants, plus more vitamin C than 10 oranges. Why not feel this good every day? Emerge and see. 
For decades, banks have been getting away with it. Charging you excess fees, making you wait in line, keeping billions of dollars of your interest. They've been treating you like you're lucky to have them. That's not right. Show them who's the boss of your money. You. Better is out there. Ally. Do it right. GEICO makes it so easy to manage my policy. With an app that lets me pay my bill, add a vehicle, or even file a claim, it's not just easy. It's aerobics in a recliner easy. It's not just easy, it's Geico easy. Feel the bird! Wandering through secret hills and telling stories round the grill. From lazing out on peaceful docks to raging to a band that rocks. You never know just where in life Corona cans might take you now. Food truck food on city nights with neon burning bright. Digging for Corona cans in coolers full of ice. Never ending summer nights with cold cans of Corona light. You never know just where in life Corona cans might take you now. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. Welcome back to College Football Primetime presented by Hulu as part of Veterans Week on ESPN brought to you by USAA. Scoop Bradshaw helped off the field moments ago and thinning out certainly the Syracuse secondary. They played today without Ifatu Melifonwu, the redshirt freshman. Bradshaw is out, so Frederick and Williams, Christopher Frederick, Trill Williams, the corners now. For Syracuse defense, it's gotten carved by Louisville the past couple years. Yeah, Louisville has averaged 59 the last two outings against this Syracuse defense, but one of the most improved places for Syracuse defensively has been that back end because of talented depth, and that depth is already tested. Jawan Puma pass to throw. He's got Crum on a first down, who dropped the ball the first time. Mickey Crum, the redshirt senior, 23-year-old, tackled by Cordy into plus territory. And the play action pass and Puma pass is going to get outside and this is a staple with Bobby Petrino off of that run game and then you boot the quarterback outside and a target in that scheme is from the tight end use tight ends and running backs in this West Coast style by Bobby Petrino. Colin Wilson. Freshman on the ground as a flag comes in after a short gain for Wilson. See if the three yard gain stands. Holding, offense, number 83, 10 yard penalty, first down. Your impact players this side of the ball come. Well, Jason, both running backs, number 12, Trey Smith and Hassan Hall, are going to have to be productive because if they're not, the defensive ends, Elton Robinson, and Kendall Coleman for Syracuse. They're speed guys. What you do with speed guys is you screen them and you run at them. And so Louisville has to be effective in that run game to slow those edge guys for Syracuse up a little bit. Screen them how? What do you mean? Throw screens right at them as they use their speed to get to the quarterback screen right where they came from. Pass under pressure. That was Coleman. And he got it away to pick up some of the penalty yards to the freshman 2-2 Adwell. So the young guys right now are really showing for Louisville. Yeah, and we talked to Louisville coaches last night, and we heard a little bit of confidence, especially out of Lonnie Galloway, that says, you know what? We've actually liked our matchup with a lot of guys that we have catching passes for us now against Syracuse's secondary the last two seasons. They're going to have to get time to get to that matchup that, at least in Galloway's mind, they like quite a bit. Second down, they will run up the middle. Talking to Bobby Petrino as Guthrie gets in there to help with the tackle. 
Bobby Petrino said something I thought was really interesting yesterday, that he loves his offense indoors specifically. <laughs> what offensive play caller does not? You have ideal conditions. You have a fast track. But his eyes lit up. I mean, there's, there's okay, we don't have to deal <laughs> with rain. My eyes lit up. I love being in here. This is a great vantage point to call a game, but playing in an environment like that is picture perfect for anyone who touches the football. Flag comes in. What Bobby Petrino doesn't like is pre-snap penalties. Ball start. Offense. Number 61. Five-yard penalty. Third down. It's on the red shirt freshman Caleb Chandler, and you saw Andrew Armstrong coming up the middle on the blitz. Yeah, and the red shirt freshman Chandler just got a little jumpy, but this isn't anything new. This offensive line hasn't performed well this entire year. We talked about they don't have Lamar Jackson, which is very true and exactly right, but the offensive line is underperformed as well. Third and 11. Robinson on his way. Pass steps up, and he goes down. Slayton again as he tried to leak out. Fourth down plus territory. What do you think? I think Bobby Petrino punts and tries to play field position early in this one. I think that's exactly what he's going to do. But that defensive front, especially the down four guys, they're fast. They're slightly undersized, to be honest with you, but they make up for it speed and quickness, and you saw it on that play. Mason King on the punt. And this is inside the 10. No flag comes in. Crowd wanted one and didn't get it. 33-yard punt, no return. Get yourself a dome dog. Hang out with us. The rules of luxury. Look, but don't touch. Touch, but don't use. Use, but don't enjoy. Enjoy, but don't show it. If you're going to follow one rule, make sure it's this one. Luxury should be lived in. Be our honored guests and get exceptional offers at the Infinity Winter Sales Event. Infinity, empower the drive. proudly offers wireless and TV discounts to military, veterans, first responders, and their families. Visit att.com slash hero. It feels like a big win oh. when you get a deal like this. This is unbelievable. Introducing McDonald's new $6 classic meal deal. Choose one of four favorites, plus any size soft drink, small fries, and a pie. All for just $6. You know, Babers has a say there may be an Otto the Orange movie by the time he leaves here, whenever that might be, because he's a huge silver screen guy. Babers loves to go to the movies, and he describes his quarterback that way. Eric Dungey, if you've got a racing car, you can't be driving Miss Daisy. Apollo 13, a great pass that he had earlier this year, a steely-eyed missile. And then, if you're into horse racing, turn it down, down the road. Uh, he's like Seabiscuit. You don't have to whip him, you just have to show him the whip. He's a pop culture that. hero, oh, Dino Baber. How about that? That's great stuff. How about Dungey? Yeah. Favorite movies, Step Brothers. Did we just become best friends? Yeah, I think we did. Okay. Remember the Titans, the town as well. You can talk to your friends at home on whether or not Eric Dungy has selected good movies. His offense sees the ball for the first time. 
and Dungy to throw on a quick hitter to the far side just short of the 20 yard line Sean Riley who put the punt on the turf earlier again and nine. They will go fast. Yes, indeed. And sometimes they'll do this. They'll go to the line, and if they don't get the look they want, they'll back off, look to the sideline. There's a gaggle of coaches over on the Syracuse sideline signaling things in, and then they snap the football. Dungy zips it and nearly intercepted. C.J. Avery, the linebacker, was in the way. It's third one. And Dungy just didn't see him. Avery was on the opposite side of this kind of the shallow over route, just a deep crossing route, and Dungy just didn't see it. You not only have to know where your receiver is, you kind of have to have a little sense of what's out in front of him, and Dungy was fortunate that C.J. Avery couldn't catch a football. Third and one is not a guaranteed rundown for Syracuse. This one is, and it is a first down for Dante Strickland. That's right in the wheelhouse of uh, Mike Lynch, the offensive coordinator for Syracuse, who grew up loving Tommy Vardell, of all people. Tommy was good on third and one. He was good on everything in one. That's true. <laughs> Dungy to run. And he slides down, gets hog tied. And while it was timely, it looked like you could possibly call it excessive. The officials have not. What do you say? I think let him play. But this is who Dungy is, JB, is. He's not only a runner of the football and a willing runner, he's a physical guy. He's the size of a tight end. And that's what this running game has done to improve this year is Eric Dungy keeping it himself, plunting. Pump and go. Incomplete. Overthrown for Taj Harris. They felt like the deep shots were there to guys like Harris in this game. Yeah, guys like Harris matched up on Chandler Jones, the true freshman number two, is the nickel defensive back. And I think that's exactly the matchup that Syracuse is going to go after. Whether Chandler is inside or outside, let's pick on the freshman. Rajay Burns out for this game for Louisville. And a flag in as this play stopped. Offside, defense, number 53, entering the neutral zone with contact, five-yard penalty, third down. And Eric Dungy using the hard count, which is not an easy thing when you're in the shotgun. You're removed from that defensive line that you're trying to influence. When you're underneath the center, the voice inflection can work more consistently, but Dungy got it done from the shotgun that time. Late choice there to give it. And it's enough for Strickland and a first down. For Louisville, we've seen some early penalties. How much can that be attributed to a team that is in a losing way and can lose some focus while doing that? Oh, I think a lot. I think you lose your way just a little bit. We'll talk with it more after the snap if we have time. Dungy sacked back at the 30-yard line. And this is something that Louisville hasn't done a whole lot. This is only Louisville's ninth sack of the entire season. And if Louisville, Louisville can get a little bit of pressure, I think Louisville is fairly comfortable with their matchup on the back end against the Syracuse receiving core. That one to Barrios Peterson. He's after Dungy again. Dungy scrambling and Dungy to the 40 yard line. Kane pass, Puma's brother with the stop. It'll be third down and five. Eric Dungy on senior night. That has been his hallmark in his Syracuse career. Injury, comeback, injury, comeback. Injured in a game with a broken foot. Keep playing. Run on third down and five with Dante Strickland. Your thoughts, Mr. Former Quarterback? Well, a lot of times in this Baylor offense that basically Dino Babers is in year three of here at Syracuse, you're going fast and then you spread it, maximum spread, maximum pace, but when you back it off a little bit, it's still based on numbers and leverage. And if we have the right numbers in the box, which Dungy thought he did, 
he wants to run the football, and Bobel just was better defensively that particular time. Numbers and leverage, JB. Syracuse has some great numbers, special teams wise. Sterling Hoffrichter barely got it away. I actually think that might have been touched just a little bit. That was almost a great play by Louisville special teams. Giants Niners, Monday at 8.15 on ESPN. Right now, I'm being controlled by a guy named Todd. Wrong button, buddy. You, gotta... you see, Todd here won this exclusive Platinum Xbox One X from Taco Bell. He's a little distracted right now. Throw it. Oh, boy. Todd! Put down the chalupa! Todd! Grab the $5 double chalupa box for a chance to win the Platinum Xbox One X only at Taco Bell. Todd! The rules of luxury. Look, but don't touch. Touch, but don't use. Use, but don't enjoy. Enjoy, but don't show it. If you're gonna follow one rule, make sure it's this one. Luxury should be lived in. Be our honored guests and get exceptional offers at the Infinity Winter Sales Event. Infinity, empower the drive. Barkeep, Bud Lights for everyone. Yee! Actually, um, I prefer a nice mead. Barkeep, Bud Lights for everyone and a mead. Yee! Is it autumnal? Bud Lights for everyone and one autumnal mead. Is it malty and full body? I because I like malty. Cancel that mead. Bud Light for the many, not the few. We're on a mission to help our heroes with their education. So in 2013, we established the VFW Sport Clips Help a Hero Scholarship Program. With the help of your generous donations, we've raised nearly $5 million and awarded more than 1,000 scholarships. You have changed lives. How many lives will we change this year? We can't wait to find out. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Add some color to your Black Friday and get a great deal on a Jeep, the best-selling SUV brand. Because the holidays are where you take them. And with a Jeep SUV, you can take them anywhere. Great deals going on all month at the Jeep Black Friday sales event. During one week to deal, financing at 3500 combined cash allowance plus 1000 total bonus cash on the 2019 Cherokee Limited. ESPN College Football is presented by Hulu. Watch your football games live all season long on your favorite channels, no cable required. And in part by Infinity. Empower the drive. Last time Syracuse had a 10-win season, that business school wasn't there. Newhouse only had two buildings, and you could drive past Bird Library. You can't do that anymore, but Dino Babers has constructed quite a beast here in Syracuse with seven wins already and a new quarterback for Louisville to face. Malik Cunningham is in, and Malik Cunningham on the boot. Inside the 20-yard line. Evan Foster finally tracked him down in the first play for Cunningham. And this is exactly who Malik Cunningham is. He has more juice in the run game portion than after the play was over. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 72 of the offense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Still, first down. And those are the senseless plays that Louisville has been a victim of all season long, but Cunningham brings more juice to the run game, and Louisville has lacked that on a consistent basis. Remember what they're coming out of. Three years of Lamar Jackson being the most dynamic player at the quarterback position in that run game, and Cunningham brings certainly much more of that than does Puma Pats, and you saw it big time on that first play. You're a Louisville fan. You've got to love seeing just anything shades of Lamar Jackson, and that run for 61 yards leads to this. And we talked to the defensive coordinator for Syracuse, Brian Ward. He said 
He was at Disney when he found out <laughs> Lamar Jackson declared for the NFL draft, and it really was the happiest place on earth for him. Mean, oh, wow. You watch Brian Ward's face when he's talking about facing Lamar Jackson, he's not a happy yeah. camper. He lost some blood in his upper extremities during that conversation, no doubt about it. And the happiest place on earth became a lot happier in that moment. To throw, Robinson got there. Alton Robinson. You're just not going to have time around the edges against Elton Robinson on the other end. It's Kendall Coleman. They come into this game with seven sacks apiece. Multiple times they meet at the quarterback simultaneously, and they're both speed guys. They drop low, they drop their shoulder, they keep their feet moving, and typically they end up with the guy trying to throw the football. Third and eight. Robinson off the spin, forced him back inside again, and those ends are just lethal for Syracuse. What did they tell us yesterday, Robinson and Coleman? You hold it for three seconds or more, yeah. we got you. And literally, as a quarterback, I would have a coach standing behind me, and he would send off bells and whistles at two and a half seconds for that very reason. The defensive guys understand that if we get there in three seconds or less, good things are gonna happen and you get a lot more confidence on the back end in coverage as well because you get used to your guys getting after the quarterback in a short amount of time. Blanton Freaky, who is perfect this year, from 50. And it's blocked. Syracuse picks it up. Freaky can't save the day, and the Orange has it to the 30-yard line. Antoine Cordy to the 30. I believe it was Chris Slayton, the nose tackle, who got his right arm up. And it's all about penetration and then get a hand up. It's not real complicated up front. You get some push. And then you get as tall as you possibly can. And the best special teams in the country, collectively, statistically, live right here in Syracuse. Top 10 scoring offense in the country. And Dungeon rolling out to throw. Inside the five, first and goal, Syracuse. Sean Riley. Quarterback Eric Dungy extends the play to some extent, and Sean Riley makes a great adjustment at the end. Those are, that's a lot of work in the summer to come up with stuff like that. Dungy lost the ball for a moment. He's officially down. A flag in over at the far side as well. This will be the sixth Louisville penalty in the first quarter. Complete lack of discipline, and that typically shows up when you have a lack of focus. And that's what you see showing up on tape with Louisville. This isn't something that started this evening. It's been going on most of the season. Offside, defense, number 53. That penalty is declined. Second down. JB, what they talk about in football, offensively or defensively, is we can't play if you can't get lined up right. And that's exactly what you see out of this team at times. They can't get lined up right. Offensively, defensively, sometimes special teams. Lack of discipline, lack of focus. Jarvion Howard, the tailback. Off the world, into the end zone. Touchdown, Syracuse. Jarvion Howard is a freshman that's getting a lot more run. Mo Neal and Dante Strickland are thunder and lightning. And then probably the most complete package is the freshman Howard. And 
that, remember, was off the blocked field goal attempt. Return, and then in the end, Syracuse turns it into a touchdown. No pressure for Jarvie on Howard, but he is from Walter Payton's next release. He's got touchdown number six very early in his career off the catch by Riley, who had the earlier turnover. Howard pays it off in Syracuse leads. This building season has been Jimmy's longest. He survived record rain and a supplier that went belly up. So while he's proud to have helped put a roof over the heads of hundreds of families, he's most proud of the one he's kept over his own. Get the most out of your money, whether you're using QuickBooks smart invoicing to get paid twice as fast or automatically tracking your mileage. Smarter business tools for the world's hardest workers. QuickBooks, backing you. Now you can buy faster and accelerate your deal on AutoTrader by putting car buying in the palm of your hand. Start your paperwork online. Choose from actual financing options and receive a real Kelly Blue Book trade-in offer to get a no-surprise monthly payment based on your information. Save time at the dealership when you start your deal online. AutoTrader. Buy faster. Syracuse seven and two, a chance to get double-digit wins for the first time since the Pasqualoni era. Dwight Freeney was just a menace back in 2001. First round pick in 2002. Syracuse went to 10 and three. Pasqualoni a couple years later was fired. Greg Robinson came in. That didn't go so hot. Scott Schaefer for a couple of years, and now Dino Babers with certainly Doug Marone in between and a couple of pinstripe bowls, but. Dino Babers seems to have something going. I think you're here. right. Careful on that limb, right? Yeah, I I think people are cautiously optimistic around here because it seems real in year three, the right things are showing up at the right time. Gets it back and a touchback. JB, you were talking about Dwight Freeney, and you talk about a guy that can come off the edge. How about your old stomping grounds right here? Oh, I think you used to live in this building. I did. Tell me some stories about what took place as a youngster. 2001, what were you up to? I was getting written up as a freshman <laughs> once. A lot of we long hours little... studying that building. And... We had a little bit of a, a party one day, and I, one I day. got myself in the slight issue with judicial affairs. Thank you very much for, for that. Is that why you went to law school? Because you got yourself in trouble at Kimmel Hall? Or? Didn't follow me for 10 years. It kind of gets expunged from the record at some point. Malik Cunningham looked good on his first drive. Coleman greets him there. And second down coming up. Well, I think why Malik Cunningham might be a better fit in this game is because I think Louisville has to run the football. and. When your quarterback can add an extra hat in the run game, certainly a run game can be more productive. Louisville hasn't had a run game, Fox. They're only averaging 112 yards coming into this game. That's in the bottom 10 in the entire country. So a little juice out of Cunningham, and maybe they can get something going offensively. They run for 67 as a team, and it's been mostly him. Andre Sisco steps up for that tackle for Syracuse on Hall, who we expect to see quite a bit today, third down. And they stand in Syracuse. Siege incomplete to the sideline and Fitzpatrick fourth down. Des Fitzpatrick was running an out route from the slot position on the left and he was covered by Evan Foster. He had a vertical route outside clearing out for Fitzpatrick but Foster ran the route better than Fitzpatrick did. If that ball was on time and actually a little bit lower Foster might have been standing in the Syracuse end zone currently. Riley back to receive, who yesterday called the weather here a hit or miss in a very generous decision. Orange will have it on first 
countdown coming up. Week 10, Sunday NFL countdown. I can say that about the weather. I went here one and one uh, with Aaron Donald, NFL's best defensive player, who shares his secrets on getting to the quarterback. Then the stories of a magical night in Philly that has filled the maternity wards with babies named Nick Carson and Billy Lilly. You gotta watch that. Uh, Giants and 49ers, 815 Eastern, 515 Pacific on ESPN. You wanna watch Saquon Barkley, oh, right? No doubt. That dude can run. Look at him holding that ball high and tight. Three points of contact. Remember, stuff. remember we talked to Josie Jewell last year, and he was just raving about how tough it was yeah. to tackle Saquon Barkley because not only can he go side to side and upfield, he can jump over you. Jump over you and or run through you if he so chooses. And Josie Jewell was no pushover. No. Former Iowa Hawkeye. Dungey to throw. Wide open Taj Harris. And he's down to midfield. First down, Syracuse, gain of 16. Gain of 16 equals maximum pace, as we're going to see right here. You're going to see Dungey come to the line of scrimmage. If he likes it, he'll run with it. If he doesn't, he'll back off and look to the sideline. They will use the motion with Riley. And that's an interesting play for Sean Riley if you get to know him. He wants to have the ball there. He's a former running back, number 10 for Syracuse. We asked him, how much do you miss running back? He said every day. Yeah, he's not a running back anymore because he's 5'8", 170, but he sneaks into the running back lines in practice. That's right. They have to kick him out. Dungey steps up. It pressure, a little sidestep, soft shoe from Eric Dungey. Riley, one of our impact players off the first down. Yeah, Riley is the inside force, and Custis, number 17, is the outside guy, and then you have Chandler the freshman that they want to find in a matchup early and often in this one. Quick hitter to Harris one more time. And the Syracuse folks that we talked to yesterday, one of the first things they said about what their offense can do tonight is we got to wear Louisville down. Yeah, it's about pace. And the first thing you do with Dino Babers is Art Bryles Baylor offense, it's maximum pace. And the pace is really what you have to defend first. Dungy snaps it off and nearly intercepted. D. Smith was by far the closest target. And D. Smith was basically in the middle of the field as more of a robber. And he's literally reading the eyes of Dungy. And he's going to run wherever the eyes take him. So when the eyes and the head go one way, the shoulder points. Number 11, D. Smith almost picked that ball off. More movement at the line. They don't stop the play. Dungy heaves it, and it is incomplete. Anthony Johnson got his mitts on it, but this is again likely offsides against Louisville. Offside, defense, number 30, five-yard penalty, third down. It's on the safety cane pass. Yeah, and obviously they were getting pressure, or at least they intended to, and so that's why you get a little jumpy, but it's all about discipline to me and about focus. You're a blitzing safety as Kane pass up on the line of scrimmage, but you have to wait for the ball to be snapped. He's doing it again. And that's exactly what Eric Dungey is using the count for, is to try to get Louisville to declare their pressure package and give a little bit of insight. The quarterback gets to read the mail a little bit. Dungey throws. Near side and a big hit on Taj Harris. It is a first down Syracuse. Trey Sean Smith bucked him down. They move the sticks. That pass was a result of the snap count that Eric Dungey used the play before. He got insight to that pressure package. Harris again, back inside of the 15. And here you see the pace. And what I meant by defend the pace first, you first of all have to get lined up and be disciplined if you're Louisville. And defensively, they haven't done a great job of do that, doing that. And then. Eric Dungey can back off a little bit, look to the sideline, get some signal, maybe get into a different block. Dungey behind his intended target, Custis. Johnson on the coverage, pressed into duty here. And this is more of the true run pass option that we've seen in college football. And Dino Babers in this offense here at Syracuse has added this to the cupboard in that 
pace of play type of offense that he brought here from Baylor. Zone run inside, react up out of that second level of the defensive people for Louisville, and then you throw the slant in behind him. With Gigi Robinson out on the defensive line, they run with Strickland in the final play of quarter number one. It was haywire early for Syracuse. A punt fumble, Louisville couldn't punch it in. The Orange has the only score after one. A migraine hope to be there for the good and not so good. For the mundane, the awe-inspiring, the heart racing, the heartbreaking. That's what life is all about, showing up. Unless migraine steals your chance to say, I am here. That's why we created Amovig, a preventive treatment for migraine in adults. One dose, once a month. Amovig is proven to reduce the number of monthly migraine days. For some, that number can be cut in half or more. The most common side effects are pain, redness or swelling at the injection site, and constipation. These are your days. What will each one bring? Doesn't matter. As long as you can say, I am here. Talk to your doctor about preventing migraine with Amovig and be there more. Discover card. I just got my cash back match. Is this for real? Yep. We match all the cash back new card members earn at the end of their first year automatically. Woo, I got my money. Sorry to contain yourself, isn't it? Uh-huh. Let it go. Woo. Get a dollar for dollar match at the end of your first year, only from Discover. It can seem unreachable at first. The bar too high, shoes too big. You'll take leaps of faith and fall on your face, but you'll get up. Hard work is 50 sprints before breakfast and another 50 for breakfast. You'll eat it, breathe it, sleep it. The Goodyear blimp doesn't show up for just anybody, so don't be just anybody. Be blimp worthy. Goodyear, more driven. Howdy, folks. For under $20, you can fill up with KFC's 10-piece chicken feast and even have some leftover in case a guest drops by. A motorcycle at the table? I do not approve! <laughs> it's 10-piece, and it's a feast. The rules of luxury. Look, but don't touch. Touch, but don't use. Use, but don't enjoy. Enjoy, but don't show it. If you're gonna follow one rule, make sure it's this one. Luxury should be lived in. Be our honored guests and get exceptional offers at the Infinity Winter Sales Event. Infinity, empower the drive. At the Joseph A. Bank Veterans Day Sale, save up to 60% store-wide. All executive suits, just $199. Our best-selling traveler dress shirts, $39. Plus, take an extra 50% off all clearance. From stitch to store, Jared. The playoff push is on Saturday night. Back to college football primetime presented by Hulu as part of Veterans Week on ESPN brought to you by USAA. Thanks for joining us with Olivia Decker on the sideline, Kelly Stauffer, Jason Benetti, our entire crew from the Carrier Dome and a guy who you may not have known until this season, even if you're a close watching Syracuse fan, Andre Schmidt. A kicker who is certainly a Groza Award candidate. He has been outstanding out of nowhere. Dino Babers, two weeks into camp, didn't even really know his name. And then he was kicking so well, Babers had to watch. And then suddenly it was, oh, I need to use this guy. He's so accurate. And Schmidt, 23 of 25 this year in field goals. Schmidt. Give Syracuse a two-score lead. We will be back in 30 seconds. Bear hugging in a bulky jacket. Bear hugging in the Duluth fire hose lumberjack.
The Duluth Trading Firehose Limberjack. Get limber. Get jacked. Get limberjacked. Only at Duluth Stores and DuluthTrading.com. Here's tight end Chris Gedney, honored here as a letter winner of distinction. Gedney passed away within the last year, and a beloved member of the Syracuse community, his family, getting that jersey from John Wildhack, the athletic director, our former colleague. And such a sad story with Chris Gedney leaving us. Third round pick of the Bears, 1993, 73 games in the NFL, eight touchdowns. But uh, he was the radio color analyst here with Matt Park for a long time, and Chris Gedney gone too soon. Hassan Hall back to watch this end up at the 25 yard line. Did you ever play against Chris Gedney? Did you get a chance to? I in the don't NFL? believe so. I don't believe so. He was a he was a wonderful man, and I know so many people in that booth next to us. Yeah, miss him dearly. Yeah, we were just talking to Matt yesterday, and I was thinking, and actually this morning, thinking about that relationship. No doubt, gone as you said, way way too soon. So Malik Cunningham, kind of a little, little bit of a fire on his offense, but as Olivia reported, each was going to get two series. So Puma Pass is back under center for the Cardinals. With Wilson, the freshman tailback. Play action for pass. And another drop. Jalen Smith, who's been so reliable, put it on the deck. Yeah, that play action boot. And so you have the tight end Jordan Davis in the flats, and then you have Jalen Smith on that next level, and then you have a vertical route. So it's three different levels, and Smith, really the most dependable veteran guy out there as far as a pass catcher. Just didn't finish the play for his quarterback, Puma Pass. He said during the week that in recent days, Louisville had a meeting, drew a line in the sand, and said everything behind it is gone. You have to stop thinking about it. As Puma hits a target five yards wide of the paint, it's third down. And you could just see, you could see this on tape as we prepared for this game. You and I talked about it, JB. Just a lack of rhythm and really a lack of confidence offensively. You're switching quarterbacks, you can't get the ball to your playmakers, and you have an offensive line that's been inconsistent, and you're third and ten, and Syracuse is about ready to dial it up again off the edges. This is a run. You said run it at those ends, and Colin Wilson certainly obliges. First down, Louisville gain a 22. This is where you see the influence of Bobby Petrino, who's known in the business as one of the top, maybe the top play caller in all the all the land in third and ten. Obvious pass down. You have edge rushers. You give a draw up the middle. You screen them. You run at them. You do those type of things. And very well blocked up front by Louisville. Wilson again on first down. And Third and ten, you run a draw. Bobby Petrino told us yesterday, he said, we used to be so good in situational spots. And he said it in the past tense, interestingly enough. Yeah, there was a whole boatload of frustration in that comment. Yeah. And trust me, you have the human highlight reel that's an eraser of mistakes called Lamar Jackson, who's easy to call plays for. And when he's gone, it exposes things. And right now, they just can't overcome some of those deficiencies, at least consistently. Pull the pass, seeking that first down line. And it looks like he's got it. Downstairs, Olivia. Well, Scoop, Scoop, Brad, Scoop Bradshaw, you got me? Guys, <laughs> hello, 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 hello. Nothing, hello, hey. <laughs> Tough loss for a defense on third and one. Another draw, and right into the teeth of that defense, and Guthrie it is a Louisville first down. Wilson again, so it's been all freshmen in the backfield for Louisville so far tonight. And certainly it's, life is much easier for the play caller Bobby Petrino and your quarterbacks if you're third and just a little bit. Do you see the angst?
angst on his face as he's talking to his coaches over on the sideline. Yeah, yeah, he is not having a good time as he holds up his play sheet to yell who only knows what behind that in his privacy. Pass takes a hit and gets it away for a catch inside the 40 for Jordan Davis, the redshirt junior out of the state of Texas. And this is where Bobby Petrino is, you know, he's a veteran coach, but he has had to try to find patience that maybe he didn't have coming into this season. You go from Lamar Jackson and the things that you could do with that young man to quarterbacks that don't consistently do much of anything right in an inconsistent offensive line of scrimmage. That's tough sledding. Another run for the freshman Hall. It's a first down for Louisville. And talking to Bobby Petrino, he was very honest with us about how much he misses his father, yeah. Bob Sr. In tough situations, he would call his dad, who he lost this summer, and basically say, what do you think? What yeah. do I do? His father was at camp sometimes for Louisville. Some of the offensive line principles for the Cardinals are based on what Bob Sr. did. So Bobby, a little bit seeking knowledge over the middle, incomplete. It was there for Jalen Smith. Yeah, Puma pass had him and just didn't put the ball on him. It's a skinny post inside, middle of the field open, and you just have to drive this football. The safety, Evan Foster is late getting over there, and that's just one that you can't miss. And that's why Bobby Petrino is frustrated. You can draw it up but you can't execute it for him on the field. You talked about the influence of Bob Sr. And one of the things is flipping the offensive line. Louisville's one of the only teams in the country that still go weak side and, and strong side and flip them, according to the formation. Middle linebacker Guthrie eats that alive. Third down and long. What do you mean by that on the offensive line? Well, a lot of times you have left and you have right. But at Louisville, you have weak and you have strong. And so what Bobby Petrino likes is the versatility. You can put your best tackle consistently on the weak side who covers up some deficiencies and then slide the rest of the line away from that to the strong side and give the rest of the offensive line help theoretically. Well, that's a Bob Senior Petrino thing. Louisville's converted third and ten and third and one, and this may be third and longer. Ball start. Offense, number 73. Five-yard penalty. Third down. It's the tackle, Makai Becton. Pre-snap penalties are in a big old pile right now for Louisville. And that's what's contributed to that average third down conversion. You don't make a living, and that's coming into the season. It's been dreadful today, but that was the fifth pre-snap penalty. The eighth penalty overall and the seventh one that was accepted. And the pre-snap things are just a lack of focus. Puma pass. Robinson got there for a moment. Pass flushed. And he's got a completion inside the 20. Seth Dawkins out of bounds for Louisville inside the 15. Nicely done by pass. And you talked about it. Puma Pass slides up in the pocket to avoid that outside edge rush by Elton Robinson. And then if it's blocked firmly up front, you give your quarterback room to what they call climb in the pocket. And that's how Puma Pass was able to find Seth Dawkins on that deep crossing route. Pass. Robinson got there again. This is caught for a touchdown by Dez Fitzpatrick. What a thread through by pass and what a catch by Fitzpatrick. Evan Foster, the corner, or actually the safety, was matched up on Fitzpatrick and it was a very tight window, no question about it. Well covered. It was actually Andre Cisco, the true freshman, matched up on Fitzpatrick. A great throw, beats great coverage most every time. Fitzpatrick out of the state of Michigan, Syracuse, showed some interest in him early. He went to Louisville, and he cashes in on the first touchdown for the Cardinals. Dave 
Busters introduces unlimited video gameplay and unlimited wings for just $19.99 every Thursday, Sunday, and Monday. All you can eat wings and endless video games for $19.99 only at Dave and Busters. Every time a Friday feels like a family reunion, a Corona gets its line. Every time your favorite song is everyone's favorite song. Every time your work friends and your friend friends become friends. Every time it feels like you're the only two people in the room. And every time it's like you're the only people on earth, a Corona gets its line. Right now, all fries and Wendy's are just $1. That's a huge deal on any size of Wendy's natural cut sea salted goodness. But a deal this good won't last long. So get your dollar fries at Wendy's before they're gone. The final chapter of the critically acclaimed television event. It's this monumental gathering of people that all share a love of the game of basketball. We all have needs. For me, it's a fresh cut. Ain't that right, Lowe's? Mm -hmm. NBA League Pass knows you need basketball. Two or three game a night habit, you need League Pass. Right, Lowe's? Mm -hmm. Big game you can't miss, NBA League Pass. Mm -hmm. Ride hard for your squad, League Pass has got you. Right, Lowe's? Lowe's? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that beat is bad, man. Ooh. It's part of my bad, man. Let, let, let me finish you Get up. what you need with live games on NBA League Pass. proudly offers wireless and TV discounts to military, veterans, first responders, and their families. Visit att.com slash hero. Last time Louisville was here, we mentioned the blowout, and it was spearheaded by one Lamar Jackson, who now resides in Baltimore, 62-28, and a gold medal hurdle that's still on posters <laughs> in the Commonwealth. Yeah, that was, that was really amazing. Even for him, that was amazing. That one moment yeah. may still define his college career. Yeah, just hand him that coveted trophy after that. But that's no longer what Louisville is offensively. And he was an overcomer of mistakes. He was an eraser. And Louisville is still making mistakes, but they don't have the eraser consistently. Sean Riley decides to take it out. Riley across the 25. The first down. Lamar Jackson, two time ACC Player of the Year, Heisman Trophy winner in 2016. He was a fixer. So many yeah. things that you now know that were problems <laughs> weren't because of him. Yeah, they're they're exposed now when that young man is playing in the NFL currently. And it was hard to really appreciate his athletic ability all the way around unless you could really see it in person. It was unbelievably dynamic and electric. And so that's what this mobile offense has missed all year. And they really haven't found anything that resembles a replacement. Dungey darts inside. He gets spun around. Eric Dungey sliding is not something that you're going to see a whole lot. He did it earlier. But here's a guy. He's got a cousin that's a major motocross champion. The question is who's tougher. His cousin had like 10 broken bones at one point, but Eric's piling them up. Up the middle, Mo Neal. Touchdown. 67 yards. Excuse me, Syracuse's offense has been considerably better this year because their ability to run the football. We talked about Eric 
Dungy's influence in that run game, a physical style, and then Mo Neal is is the lightning if Strickland is the thunder, and it's about counting the box and running the appropriate play when you have the numbers, and Syracuse had the numbers right there. Longest Syracuse rushing play of the year goes to Darius Quantavius Neal Jr. Hey Mo, touchdown Syracuse. So we want to make sure you're covered properly. Okay, State Farm, let's just say hypothetically that someone used Aaron's bathroom and that person lit a candle and the candle accidentally lit a towel on fire and the towel charred the wall. What would that... Weren't you just in the bathroom? I've never been in a bathroom. Not once. How does that work? Well, I meditate and I make it go away. It smells like you burned some. We should definitely investigate it. Go with the one that's here to help life go right. State Farm. This is turkey in a vat of boiling oil. And these are Arby's deep fried turkey sandwiches. What inspired us to serve the tastiest, yet most risky preparation of turkey? A really confusing motto here at Arby's that we live by. If you love it, fry it. And if you don't love it that much, fry it until you love it. I never noticed that. Arby's, we have the meat. For sandwiches. This is Dell Cinema Technology. Uninterrupted streaming, brilliant sound clarity, and lifelike color. Experience Dell Cinema on the XPS 13. Get up to $200 off select XPS 13 laptops at Dell.com. Okay, one more. Oh, oh, All right, Benji. Come on, Benji. Yeah, smile. Come on, what Benji. about the flash? Just smile. Okay, okay, one more. Benjamin, hold well, it Make a flash, away. Benji. You have to back it up. You want to get everybody in. You can't get everybody in unless you back well, up. He's did it. He's there you go. Escape the football at Buffalo Wild Wings and try our new game day menu featuring $5 brats, cocktails, cheeseburger and fries, and pitchers. ESPN College Football, brought to you by eBay. If it's happening this season, it's happening on eBay. And Buffalo Wild Wings. Try our $5 game day menu. What is that? What Those is are some of the worst pictures of all that. <laughs> that was Mike Cousins, by the way, next to me, who's got the call of the Boise State game right after us. Kevin Look Brown. Those pictures. You see what I did, by the way? I, I took our colleague Kevin Brown and said, here, yeah. you sit behind this partition. Yeah, no kidding. Okay. But how about that hairstyle you had going there? Really, really tight on the sides and a little buzz top. You're growing it out a little bit currently. Thank you for this 60-minute uh, roast that you've got planned. Really appreciate it. That was the AAA uh, ball club here in Syracuse, now the Mets. Here's Eric Dungey on that last drive, though. Well, you talked about he's a physical runner, and that's been a difference in this Syracuse offense in the run game in particular this year, but he goes down into an awkward position on the carry before the touchdown by Mo Neal, and I watched him come off the field, and he wasn't right. He was tended to on the sideline. It seems like he was fine, went back to his guys, and was talking it up, but Olivia, if you can get a little closer and maybe see what happened, it would be interesting because that guy's not going to slide anytime soon. Pass is high to the sideline and incomplete. He wanted to pump the tight end. Second down. Surprised at all that it's pass and not Cunningham. Not really based on what Petrino said. I mean, I, Cunningham had some nice juice in the run game, but it didn't really lead to anything. Yep. So I don't think there was anything to change his plan. And so you put Puma Pass in. And remember who Bobby Petrino is offensively. He's a pro-style West Coast guy that wants to throw it first and invite safeties down. And that's what he would like to do with Puma Pass. Who puts it on the ground, and Syracuse is on it easily without Robinson.
And it's Puma, Puma Pass in the quarterback read game. And Puma Pass was pulling it and trying to get around the outside. And a little bit of lack of communication between Pass and the running back. And the ball ends up in the hands of Elton Robinson. Syracuse was awful in turnover margin last year. They have had major gains in that spot, top five in the country yeah. in year-to-year -year turnover margin change. Just one more area where you see this transformation at Syracuse under Dino Babers really starting to gain traction. O'Neal, who just had the touchdown. Elton Robinson, by the way, we talked to him and Kendall Coleman together, and how symbiotic are they? I mean, they can basically finish each other's sentences and sandwiches. Yeah, the only difference is Coleman dips his shoulder and gets a little bit lower, and Robinson stays a little bit higher, and his speed rushed to the quarterback. Other than that, they look like two peas in a pod. Dungey. Sideline route to the end zone. Incomplete. Custis, the big target, hauled it in, but not in the end zone. And in this offense, you spread it as much as you possibly can, and then it's Eric Dungy's task to find the one-on-one -on -one coverage. And he tries to find Custis outside, and that ball was just thrown a little bit too wide. You have to give Custis, who's 6'5", and a tremendous basketball player, you got to give him room to go up and get it in the corner of the end zone. Blitz coming from the near side. Dungy felt it. He has Custis on that side, and he throws it away. So fourth down coming up. You're kicking, right? You got one of the best kickers in the country. I was going to say that you discovered one of the best kickers in the country where you know Babers had to learn his name sometime in camp. How about the discovery, though? They say, okay, you can kick it in camp. Yeah. You're good for that. Uh -huh. Now, what if we ratchet up the pressure? They literally were throwing water on him as he kicked in practice to make sure that he could handle the pressure of an in-game situation. Well, we can't even repeat some of the verbiage <laughs> that was in the air at the time either. From 39, Schmidt sinks another. The guy's unbelievable. I mean, seriously. Not since Josh Altman have they seen a kicker like this. Fumble, turnover, Syracuse puts more points on the board. Fourth straight Syracuse scoring drop. Every time a Friday feels like a family reunion, a Corona gets its line. Every time your work friends and your friend friends become friends. And every time it's like you're the only people on earth, a Corona gets its line. Are we ready for the half court challenge? The shot is up. Yeah! Yeah! Hey, sir, your order's ready. Yeah! Sir, your order? It feels like a big win oh. when you get a deal like this. This is unbelievable. Introducing McDonald's new $6 classic meal deal. Choose one of four favorites, plus any size soft drink, small fries, and a pie. All for just $6. Charging you excess fees, making you wait in line, keeping billions of dollars of your interest. They've been treating you like you're lucky to have them. That's not right. Show them who's the boss of your money. You. Better is out there. Ally. Do it right. This isn't a liner. Well, to be clear, it's an invisible liner from Smile Direct Club. Our liners take teeth like these and transform them into those. 
They discreetly take this and turn it into that. We send your aligners directly to you, and in an average of six months, you could have a lifetime supply of confidence. Join more than 250,000 satisfied grinners who got a smile they love for only 80 bucks a month at smiledirectclub.com. Giants Niners, Monday at 8.15 on ESPN. This season, Taco Bell is celebrating student sections Yay! and passionate fans like the Syracuse Orange by awarding the best student section of the year. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see if your team made this week's rankings and to see how your school can compete. More than competitive, the Syracuse Orange, four straight scoring drives to lead Louisville, which has been a little... Let's say Cavalier with the football recently. To the end zone. Or Cavalier with the football was the phrase, I think, for a touchback. Tomorrow on ABC, college football playoff implications. In the Atlantic, Trevor Lawrence, Clemson, number 17, Boston College, the resistance in Chestnut Hill, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC and live on the ESPN app. The Tigers have won the last seven against the Eagles. Those running backs are fantastic. Oh, coming. yeah. You talk about lightning and thunder right there. Dylan is a beast running the football, physical, all about who Steve Adazio is, by the way. Louisville just got a base full of Clemson last week, and Malik Cunningham on the run here gets belted by Boston. Second down, but talking to Brian Ward, the defensive coordinator for Syracuse, he said something interesting about Clemson, I thought. He said, look, they are always in the right now, call. For injury. Always. And Syracuse, a team that nearly took Clemson down, Certainly uh, played pretty well in that game. Cunningham is down for Louisville. So the quarterback, the redshirt freshman out of Montgomery, Alabama. Here's the hit. And we've talked about this, the ball handling and the ability to add a quarterback to the run game, and, and he just gets pounded. Malik Cunningham has, has that ability, and you could see it in Bobby Petrino's eyes when he talked about that young man is, one thing is Bobby Petrino likes is Cunningham has played quarterback forever. Yep. And that matters. The more reps, even if it's like eight-year-old reps, that matters if you were a quarterback from the get-go. And Olivia talked about it. There's more fire. He's more of a natural leader even than maybe Puma Pass is. And then the option game is a great add to the run game. Puma Pass back in with the injury to Cunningham. Pass over the middle, intercepted into the arms of Sesco. He's inside the five. 37 yard return stopped by pass, just yard short. And Puma Pass just airmills this. This is a staple of the West Coast Bobby Petrino offense. The quick passing game to try to invite those safeties down, and it's just a slant that was thrown too high. And you've seen a lack of ability transferring weight by Puma Pass at times. A little push in the front of the pocket, and the quarterback Puma Pass doesn't transfer weight and get on top of the ball and really stick it in there, and the ball will sail on you like it did there. Howard. Check the mark. Holding. Offense. Number 60. 10 yard penalty. First down. Ton Cody Conway, the senior on a lovely Plainfield, Illinois. Cody Conway is the left tackle, certainly out on the point of attack. It's just an outside zone play, and Cody's the center of attention and has to set the edge. Cody Conway is supposed to be the best athlete on the line of scrimmage. 
and he considers himself also the best golfer, which is apparently still up for debate, but Cody gets called for the takedown there. Lang again. Dungey lobs it. End zone incomplete. Some contact there. No flag. Another pre-snap defensive penalty on Louisville. Offside defense. Number 94. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. G.G. Robinson. So those penalties, what would you classify them as? A lack of attention to the details that go into playing this game well. But what, what detail? Just like just not focused. Yeah, I mean you have to be focused in this game first and foremost That's the starting point for both sides of the ball another flag This is short of the target Incomplete for Harris, but there is a marker on the far side The offsides train continues to roll forward Offside defense number 58 half the distance to the goal still first down if you're offside ten times and a half you're onside. It's like a double negative. I can, can't imagine that Eric Dungy is doing anything that different than most quarterbacks do, even though he's a veteran and he understands the snap count. Unless the center, Aaron Service, is doing some kind of a head fake in there. Charvion Howard. Stonewall back at the four. The Louisville coaches were certainly animated on the sidelines, and it didn't seem like it was directed toward their own players. So typically, when the defense is jumping offsides at this level of egregiousness, I guess is the word. Is that a word? It is now. It is after now. After five and a half. It's what I just, how I would describe what I've seen out there. But hey, watch the football and move when it moves. Option play, Dungey trying to turn it upfield, and he's yanked down by Jared Goldwire. Have you ever seen something like this in one half? No, not to this extent. I don't think I've seen anything close to it. Because what I talked about, the little things, the littlest, most micro thing on the defensive side in the front seven, especially the defensive line of scrimmage, is watching the football. That's all about focus. Focus on that thing, and when it snapped, then you get after it. Third down toward the end zone. Touchdown! Dungey himself for six. Syracuse just pays it off by getting a push up front and the physical nature of Eric Dungey's quarterback run game. It's like a tight end with the football. More like Seabiscuit. Seabiscuit showing the whip. You don't have to use it. And it's mistakes by Louisville that's leading to a potential avalanche by Syracuse because Eric Dungey knows what to do with it. It's not what champions do, it's what champions don't do. They don't back down, they don't settle, and they don't quit. Except for Cable. Cable. Yeah, you quit Cable. Because we are Cougars, and we don't quit. Unless what? Unless it's Cable! Quit cable and switch to Direct TV and get the most live sports in 4K. More for your thing. That's our thing. 1 800 Direct TV. Nothing fires you up for game day like Zaxby's. The fresh made to order flavor always comes through with a win to make any tailgate one for the record books. Zaxby's, the official chicken of sports fans. You've walked in their footsteps, but you may not know their names. Their guides, just like our founder, Eddie Bauer. They teach us, challenge us, they show us the way. Almost a century later, we continue Eddie's legacy of innovation by building technical gear with guides so you could live your adventure. 
Eddie Jimenez is the son of immigrants who fought for a better life for their family. Through their example, Eddie learned to fight for others. When the strongest hurricane of the century made landfall, Eddie took to the air, rescuing 42 people and earning a medal for his heroism. Eddie flew with a fighting spirit that can't be pinned to the ground. Since 1925, we've proved that it doesn't matter where you come from, it matters what you're made of. Modelo, brewed with a fighting spirit. Computer, order pizza. Of course, Daniel. Fridge, weather. Clear skies in 75. Trash can, turn on the TV. My pleasure. Ice dispenser, find me a dog sitter. Okay. And make ice. Pizza delivered. What's happened to my son? I think that's just what people are like now. I mean, with Progressive, you can quote your insurance on just about any device, even on social media. He'll be fine. <laughs> Willie? I don't know. A true classic never goes out of style. Like Zaxby's all-new Southern TLC chicken sandwich, a hand-breaded buttermilk filet served classically delicious with lettuce, tomato, and mayonnaise. Made fresh to order, made to crave. Zaxby's. I believe the football word for this is opportunistic. Yeah, no doubt about it. And that is an amazing turnaround. And when you can get into double digits, you're on to a special year. There isn't any question about it. And, and the quarterback that you have running the offense in the third year of Dino Babers is up, up tempo is, is Eric Dungy that knows how to pay it off as well. Well, you get Dungy, comes out for five minutes. Tommy DeVito comes in against North Carolina, gets him a win that was terribly important to this ranking right now of 13. And Dino Babers said this about Eric Dungy. If you're not going to play him, you better be right. No question. That was a great statement. And the competitive nature of Eric Dungy and his desire to get better, the work that he put in to becoming a master of what Dino Babers wants to do offensively here has been pretty impressive. A little bit pass, still the quarterback. And Hall overrun, swarmed under by Kylan Whitner. Eric Dungy has been at the middle of that improvement in the run game. So you have the turnovers, takeaways, and that improvement, and then you have Eric Dungy leading a resurgence of the run game, and then you have the best collective special teams unit in the country. Pass on the run, lost the ball again! Kingsley Jonathan was right there to vacuum it up for Syracuse. This seemed just like careless ball handling by Puma Pass. I don't think anyone touched it initially. He's running out there by himself and just doesn't secure it. And that's another little thing. They named this game after that ball. And so you have to value the football and the guys who touch it, typically a quarterback, mainly in any offense, and you have to value it and take care of it. And Louisville hasn't done that consistently this season. Nine penalties, three turnovers in the game for Louisville. Bo Neal, amazing, inside the 20. How would you best describe this first half for the Louisville Cardinals, who haven't won since mid-September? Disastrous and somewhat typical of their season. Dungy to the outside. And they get inside the 15, but Pierce the tight end. You know, and Dungey and company running this offense are more than welcome to take full advantage of the miscues by Louisville. We're going to run it here. Syracuse was much more ready than Louisville, and Mo Neal turns into a battering ram for Dungey. Looked like a Three Stooges play. <laughs> Where's Curling? Got Mo and Eric, the lost stooge. Pierce again, he's gonna lose guards. Second down. Syracuse, 
ranked 13th, best ranking in the controlling poll in 20 years since Donovan McNabb was here. Last top 10 ranking was week three of 1996. Dungey slows it down. And Syracuse will have to fight the butterflies of even dreaming about bringing the play clock down to zero. Doesn't happen too much. Timeout Syracuse. The Orange at 7 and 2 overall, 4 and 2 in the ACC. Losses to Clemson and Pittsburgh. First time ranked in 17 years and it kind of was a be careful what you wish for when Paul Pasqualoni got fired he was providing winning seasons including a bowl his last year and then yikes after that until Doug Marone showed up yikes but Dino Baber is is an extremely likable guy yeah wouldn't you agree yeah no question and then what you have to do even though you're likable is you have to win in a Power Five school and FBS school in general, you have to win. And I think Dino, Dino Babers believes he's arriving at that place really about on time as, as far as he's concerned. And year three in this, this up-tempo offense, and it really transforms the whole program because the defense has to learn to play with an offense that's going to go fast. And, and then there's been a talent upgrade on the roster as well that's showing up. Dungy to throw for the end zone and batted away. Nice coverage from Johnson to set up third down. And typically what this offense is about, it's exactly what Art Bryles by and large was doing in Baylor and they spread it as wide as they possibly can. And then Dungy basically looks for numbers and looks for leverage. If you have numbers in the box, you can count on a run. And if you don't, you can count on something outside. And he has Custis one-on-one -on -one outside with the safety kind of leaking out that direction. Dungy hit and dropped. Sacked outside the 15. Peterson's had a very nice first half of the defensive line for Louisville. One thing Dino Babers probably won't be happy with is all the field goals. Yeah, no question. And they haven't been all that great in the red zone. 60% touchdowns. And, and this offense to go fast, I mean, you have to pay it off on third down because you have to possess it. They're only 39% coming into tonight. And then not enough touchdowns in the red zone. And we're seeing that symptom show up again this evening. Schmidt again for three. Let's go inside the studio and dance. All right, Jason Benetti coming up at the halftime meet. Jesse Palmer and Joey Galloway, the key to BC, pulling off an upset against Clemson. College game day will be there. Also, Florida State, can they pull off a surprise victory against Notre Dame as they'll be without their starting quarterback, Ian Book, and the Marty Party will report on Alabama's biggest concern, the juggernaut that is the Tide. I want to hear more of the 60-minute roast of Jason Benetti. How about stories of Benetti sophomore year? Kelly Stoffer, come on, take it away. And then I was just yeah. gonna I was gonna plug We're your podcast. That, I was gonna plug his podcast and say Dino Babers needs to be on the Cinephile podcast because <laughs> they both love movies, but I ain't gonna do that because Adnan's being mean to me. Yeah. I'll get to the sophomore year and we might climb right up to the senior year before this one's all said and done. This is your life was canceled like decades ago. I have no idea what we're I doing. Know, I have addresses, I have roommates. Uh-huh. Jason Horowitz was a former roommate, right? He what was? intel did I get from him? Stay tuned. But well, former dream job contestant Jason Horowitz seen on these airwaves. Let's go downstairs to Olivia. Well, the third Louisville quarterback is going in now. It's number 15, Sean McCormick. He's a walk-on, and he's never played a college game. And the only reason he's going in is because the original third backup, Jordan Travis, he transferred last week. So big change up there, and obviously they're missing right now with, uh, with Malik Cunningham. He's in the locker room being evaluated for an upper body injury, and we won't see him till after half. Wow. Transfers galore this week for Louisville, and this one certainly hurts with the third man on the depth chart, McCormick. 
Hit as he throws, it wobbles to the sideline, intercepted. Kylan Whitner yanks it down. Pressure once again is going to get to the quarterback, and the quarterback is going to get whacked right in the arm as he's throwing the football. That was Frederick, Christopher Frederick, number three, coming off the edge, and he's actually a corner blitz off the short corner right into the face of Sean McCormick. And welcome to the game. If Syracuse knows you're throwing it, they will get pressure in a Menagerie of different ways, and that's one of them right there off the short corner. A menagerie. That's a lot. It's more than just a skosh. Somewhere between a, a lot and a bit. Dutchie play action. Got the hit to the 30. Taj Harris scoots up the field. First down, Syracuse. Sturgill made the tackle after a gain of 16. And so that's where the leverage was. The numbers weren't inside, leverage outside, softness on Harris. Throw the ball out there, run a nice route, easy pitch and catch. Dungey. Eric Dungey down to the 10 yard line, and he took a big spill again with Kane Pass on his legs. Kane of 14 that time, and Dungey's mad at himself. He wanted six. Ravion Pierce, undersized tight end, was out there on the edge blocking really well, and that's what Dungey did is he pulled it on the zone run inside, got to the edge, and then Pierce, the tight end, picked up a great block, and Dungey's probably right. He may not have gotten the most out of that run. Mo Neal inside the 10, and you've got to believe Brian Kelly and Notre Dame have eyes on this game with the schedule looming for a Notre Dame-Syracuse game coming up next week. Dungey slants incomplete for Custis. Anthony Johnson, 27, has been out there on an island a lot against Jamal Custis, who's a Dynamic receiver, 6'5", 213. So what Syracuse will do is a three-by-one set, three to one side, and that'll get Custis alone on the opposite side. But Anthony Johnson is doing a great job matched up outside. Mo Neal to the goal line. Touchdown. We asked about Louisville stock at the top of the show. Black Friday for the Cardinals. Syracuse's program is at a point where they can take full advantage if you don't get it right. And Syracuse, or Louisville hasn't had it right. Turning the football over, pre snap penalties all over the place, and Syracuse is making a pay for it. Schedule coming up. Syracuse will take on Notre Dame in a game that Notre Dame moved to Yankee Stadium, then Boston College. But Syracuse, which has for a while branded itself as New York's college team, has played at Yankee Stadium a couple times. Snow for Ryan Nassif and a launch for a touchdown to Marcus Sales to beat Kansas State in 2010. Bad weather again, December 2012, West Virginia. Take me home where it's not snowing. Prince Tyson Gully, Jerome Smith. That's unreal. That well, looked fun, huh? They do come from Syracuse, New York, right? Oh, yeah, but they play in perfect conditions. I like the, uh, uh -oh. they're still doing the ESPN signs with the acronym and whatnot. I like that. It's nice. It feels like 1998 again. It's because they get we on television. 37 points in 17 minutes, Cal, for Syracuse. Yeah. Louisville will have the ball at the 25. What do you got this time, huh? 
you closed your eyes and I was walking you into a building, would you know where you were? Well, you have footage you of the house that place? I lived at? You recognize this place? You took photos and video inside a house We don't even know who live lives there anymore, but let me Other ask you this. Other people live there. You walk up the stairs and you That's... enter this room. It's the smallest room in the house. That's my Is bedroom, but it's not mine anymore. all you can afford? What are you... <laughs> Why did you take video they have of other bigger people's rooms. house? They have bigger rooms. I don't know why you were living in the closet. That was our house at 831 Livingston in Syracuse when I was a student. Who's we? My roommates and I. Are you going to name them? Because no, they're I'm the not. ones that threw you under the bus. It That's, gave me all of that information. That was live television trespassing that we yeah. just did. Well, yeah, we didn't give our names. Actually, it was Jason Greenberg. So, by the way. Jason Horowitz, Sandy Weintraub, yeah. David Spiegel, Lauren Kanasker, uh, Scott Hugelmeyer. Thank you very mates. much, by the way. Yeah, thanks for that, Kel. If the walls could have talked when we were getting that video, we would have had some further stories to tell. If the people could have talked who you were breaking and entering on. Oh, look, a flag. Ball start. Offense, number 72. Five-yard penalty, second down. I am an alumnus of Syracuse University, and that's a picture from last week. Uh, Mike Tirico, Beth Mullen, Sean McDonough, uh, Ian and Noah Eagle, you can't tell them apart. That's Ian's son, who's gonna have all of our jobs very, very soon. Uh, but Ian Eagle won the, the Marty Glickman Award for dedication to sports media. Olivia Stopsky runs the whole uh, Newhouse Sports Media Center, taking over for John Nicholson. And, uh, what a room that was. Very smart people and me. McCormick with his first completion to the 34. Thanks for this retrospective. Yeah. It's very nice. Yeah, no, no question. We, we may have some more. Who knows? John McCormick, we had to look his number up. But I will tell you this, and this is the truth. Out of the quarterbacks from Louisville throwing the ball on the field before the game, I wanted to know this young man's name because he has a whip, and Bobby Petrino loves to throw it. Pressure coming, flag down. And another catch for Seth Dawkins, the junior, who had 42 grabs last year with Lamar Jackson at the helm, just 18 coming into this game. And we'll check the marker. Offside, defense, number 94, five yard penalty, first down. The game clock will start on the snap. We find out that offsides is contagious. Uh, Bobby Petrino, you look at Louisville this year and you say, wow, what a tough year, but they don't lose big. No, they just don't. That all may change tonight. 30 point lead for Syracuse in the first half. McCormick covers up the ball and gets decked at the 45 yard line. You got three timeouts. You play it like a two minute drill here? Absolutely. You have to teach them the situational aspects of the game, and you run it just like normal. But I will tell you this, there's a little bit of history here. Nino Babers is in his third year. In year number one, Bobby Petrino, Lamar Jackson and company hung 62 on this squad in Syracuse. And then last year, 56 to 10 on the road at Louisville. So I'm not saying that there's any payback in mind. It might be somewhat spontaneous, but I think there are going to be some more points scored in the second half by the Orange. You do? I'm guessing that might happen. Do you live on Baker Street? Do you have a guy named Watson that works with you? <laughs> no, I live on 831 Livingston. Uh -huh. those, poor, those poor people. Yeah. What are you doing? I don't know. I don't know. 37-7, to Syracuse did not score until 3.45 to go in the first quarter. The Avalanche did great work for it. Well, that's because Louisville kept spitting the bit. They just kept popping the thing up and throwing it on the carpet. There have been wobbly bits in this first half for Louisville. Incomplete. an elite play caller which Bobby Petrino certainly is and has that reputation and is well known Brian Ward certainly paid his respect to Bobby Petrino and but you want to throw it first well to throw it first you have to protect them first and 
Louisville hasn't done that very well, regardless of who's in quarterback. Pressure right up the middle. McCormick sliding down, just got it away. Andrew Armstrong bearing down on him. So this is pretty simple. It's cover up all of the offensive linemen and then bring Andrew Armstrong, which nobody slides to protect. And then McCormick, if he doesn't have protection, as Bobby Petrino is letting him know in a very loud voice that we can't hear right now, is if you're not protected, you need to make something happen on some kind of a hot read, and McCormick didn't do that either. Riley. Fair catch. 15 schools all on one network. A new place to call home, the ACC Network, coming August 2019. They do such a great job here getting ready for the ACC Network. Kristen Hennessy and the entire crew here at Syracuse University in the Newhouse School. Uh, Louisville has become, Kel, the third FBS team in the last 15 seasons to allow 35 or more points in three straight first halves. 2011 Indiana, 2005 Rice. That is not what you want to be known for. But it's a cooperative effort right now for Louisville. They offense spits it up, and the defense can't tackle anybody. Dungey's going to throw, or at least wants to. Dungey down the field, incomplete. Akeem Johnson. The intended target. What do you make of this? Yeah, I'm just saying. I talked about maybe more points being scored, and I think that's a foreshadowing to what may come in the second half is get the ball back in a slightly backed up situation, and they go for the long ball. Short pass to the freshman, Harris on the outside. And Syracuse will have at least one more play. Well, look, you can't abandon your principles, right? Yeah, principles are to score as many points as you can on anyone you play, but there may be just slightly more incentive tonight. I'm not sure. You're saying maybe because of the losses the last couple of years. Hung 62 on us, hung 56 on us, average of 115 to 38. What do they call that? Canuppins? Come up and that second one actually second more one, than the okay. first one. Yeah, Louisville 10 penalties, four turnovers. Syracuse a 30 point second quarter. Adnan Burke is in the studio. He's got the halftime report. Adnan. All right, JB, thank you very much. This is indeed our halftime report. Jesse Palmer and Joey Galloway and me. Syracuse is averaging 43 points per game, fellas. So this isn't totally shocking. They got 37 at the half. But where in the world does defense come from, Joe? Well, uh, to begin this game, you was wondering if Syracuse was looking ahead to the Notre Dame game yeah. this week. And for the first quarter, it was 7 nothing. Maybe they were. But then they scored 30 points in the second quarter. And their defense has played incredible in this game. And so now they can start looking ahead if they feel like it. They have they created four turnovers in this game. They've gotten after the quarterback. They've gotten a couple sacks. And this defense is something that we don't really talk about when we talk Syracuse. We always talk about the offense. We always talk about Eric Dungeon, their ability to go downfield with the football and put points on the board, which they did show to us in the second quarter. But defensively, they stepped their game up. And they're going to need to play this way if they're going to have a chance to beat Notre Dame next week. They're doing a good job running the football, too, on offense. And I think you expected that against the Louisville D, giving up 277 rushing yards per game. We see this each and every week. It's Eric Dungey, whether it's designed or whether it's on scrambles. He can extend the play, use his athleticism, get north-south, and move the chains, but also getting Mo Neal going here on the zone play inside. The speed, the ability to make people miss, and then hit the home run. Syracuse right now only has one penalty in the first half, so head coach Dino Babers, he has this team locked in and focused on playing this game tonight. Not, not looking at Notre Dame or Boston College after that. Remember, if Syracuse finishes 10-2, They'll have an argument to play in a New Year's Six Bowl game. It's terrific, but Dino Beavers has these guys focused on tonight. Worry about they Notre Dame start, next week. They can start looking ahead. Now. Maybe now. Well, you yeah. mentioned Syracuse one penalty. Louisville, nine penalties, four brutal. turnovers. I think they bumped up the brutal. 10. I checked, I checked my stats. I think it went up to 10. But seriously, when did Bobby Pacino go from being an offensive genius to being in charge of a team that's humiliating right They're now? They're 0-6 in the ACC. They're just trying to get through. And players are decommitting. That's oh. another issue right now in the recruiting trail. It's w horrific. Way to kick them when they're down, Ed. Hey, I'm just letting you, I don't like to bury things, but yeah, honestly. you just buried them. Well, bring out the grave diggers right now. And uh, when we come back, we'll talk about Notre Dame without Ian Book, how that will impact them, plus also the dominance of Clemson and Florida State looking for an upset. We'll see.
Jared. At the Joseph A. Bank Veterans Day sale, save up to 60% store-wide. All executive suits, just $199. Our best-selling traveler dress shirts, $39. Plus, take an extra 50% off all clearance. From stitch to store, that's the bank way. It can seem unreachable at first. The bar too high. Shoes too big. You'll take leaps of faith and fall on your face. But you'll get up. Hard work is 50 sprints before breakfast and another 50 for breakfast. You'll eat it, breathe it, sleep it. The Goodyear blimp doesn't show up for just anybody. So don't be just anybody. Be blimp worthy. Goodyear, more driven. Your Highness, thank you for the invitation. Yes, though our moat is much larger than this. <laughs> Our great hall is much greater than this. Much. Mm. Our parties are much less crowded than this. Oh, and our beers are much fancier than that. Much. Why did we invite them again? We're raiding the castle and needed a distraction. Attack, man! Bud Light. For the many, not the few. where student success is a team effort. Here's a Pizza Hut pro tip. Create a game day atmosphere for your guests. Sweet man cave, bro. Thanks, man. <laughs> oh! T-shirt cannon. Order online at pizzahut.com because no one out pizzas Increase the value of your home during Menard's Home Improvement Sale. Quality tool sets make great gifts. This 20-piece ratcheting combination wrench set or 128-piece crescent tool set are your choice. $39.99. All Bosch and Dremel power tool accessories are on sale. This 18-piece jigsaw blade set is $14.97. This orbital jigsaw, circular saw, or reciprocating saw are your choice. $99. Plus, a Menard's gift card is always a great gift idea. Save big money at Menard's. Here's your Buick, sir. Actually, that's my Buick. Your Buick doesn't have a roof rack. This is my Buick. How are we gonna fit in your mom's Buick? Easy. I like that new Buick. Me too. I was actually talking about that Buick. I knew that. Did you? Buick's fresh new lineup is full of surprises. Get over 4,200 total value on this 2018 Buick Encore. Plus get an additional 750 purchase allowance when you finance through GM Financial. if you picked the wrong <laughs> College game day built by the Home Depot live from Boston College tomorrow at 9 Eastern on ESPN. Well, the Clemson offense has been on a tear of late. They haven't trailed for a single snap in the last four games. They've had 18 touchdown drives of two minutes or less since October began. The most in FBS over that span. They're a juggernaut. How about the BC defense? Here's Jesse Palmer. Adnan, Clemson's offense has been terrific in recent weeks, but Boston College is a very confident team right now. They're a top 20 team. They've won three games in a row playing at home. The thing I love about Boston College on defense, very smart, very physical defense. They love to blitz. On this play against Miami, it's a simple zone play, and you're going to see Boston College slant their D-line this way. They've got linebackers blitzing. Watch the Mike linebacker here blitz all around, and they get into gaps. Everybody taking a gap away. When you watch this play at this point, there's nowhere for this running back to go. All gaps taken away by this good physical Boston College defense. They do a great job stopping the run, and they'll blitz you on passing downs and on running downs as well. But they also do a great job taking the football away. 21 takeaways this year, which is tied for most in the ACC. In this example, third and three. They understand down and distances. And in this situation, man-to-man -man across the board, they're expecting a quick throw for Miami. So keep your eye on this DB right here, expecting a three-step drop type throw. It's exactly what happens. He's going to squat on the route, anticipates the short throw, jumps in front of it, and he's able to make the pick. Clemson's offense has scored at least 40 points in each of their last four games. If Boston College is to have any chance to win this game and beat their first AP Top 5 opponent at home for the very first time ever, this Boston College defense better play lights out.
All right, Jess, good stuff there. So you stay over there. We're going to talk to Joey now and focus on four I like stage. having space. I was going to say, you can stretch it out a little like bit right now. I like to slide over Jesse's spot. Yeah. <laughs> you do whatever you need to do. <laughs> Speaking of sliding around, Notre Dame's doing that. As their quarterback, Ian Book, slides out. Brandon Wimbush comes back in against Florida State. Wimbush is a guy who's been much maligned, but you said to me at the start of the year, he can throw it. It's just a matter of accuracy. Yeah, the arm talent is there. It, it is hitting his own guys with the football. is the problem. He has four interceptions and one touchdown on the season, right. which just wasn't good enough. Hasn't thrown a touchdown in his past couple games. So he got benched. Ian Book has come in, and this offense has been completely different with Ian Book with their ability to throw the ball. But Brandon Wimbush is a terrific runner. He's an athlete, and he grounded this team to, you know, to three wins. Mm -hmm. You know, They won those games. They're just different when he's at quarterback because they have to run the Ball. Now, the good news is they're going against a Florida State team that has given up over 100, 100 points in their last two games. Yeah. And so Notre Dame will be fine with Wimbush at quarterback going against a Florida State team unless Florida State all of a sudden finds themselves. But I expect Notre Dame to win this game easily. Yeah, also 200 points they've allowed their last four games. You're right. That there you go kicking somebody when but they're down. You, you gave your point. I just further elaborated it. I tried to go two games. You had to go four games. <laughs> Stronger sample My size. Still goodness. to come here to have to report. We'll get Jesse back over here to rescue me, and we'll also focus on Alabama, Georgia, and Oklahoma. We'll hear from all of those teams' reports from our reporters when we come back. We don't take our Jersey Shore roots lightly. We take them heavy. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. For decades, banks have been getting away with it. Charging you excess fees. Making you wait in line. Keeping billions of dollars of your interest. They've been treating you like you're lucky to have them. That's not right. Show them who's the boss of your money. You. Better is out there. Ally. Do it right. I've been having dreams. Jumping on a trampoline. Flipping in the air. I never land just floating. Gopi has built her business with her own two hands. Each unique piece comes to life in the same way. A messy, sloppy, splattery way. But now she's found a way to keep her receipts tidy, even when nothing else is. Snap and sort your expenses with QuickBooks and find on average $4,628 in tax savings. Smarter business tools for the world's hardest workers. QuickBooks, backing you. Some places make cheesesteaks in a fancy microwave. That's cute. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. We keep on marching and we won't back down. Third corner of the end zone. Coming at you. Coming at you. Deep in the trap. And it's ripped away. In the black of night, through blue sky thinking, we thrive in green spaces. Here, we know gray most definitely matters. Even in whiteout conditions, we make things clear and sometimes strike gold. We see the world as it could be. We see the world in color. And at Syracuse University, all we see is orange.
Oh, how great is that? Tim Tebow joins Stan Barrett, Marty Smith, an unforgettable adventure of the men and women of the USS Carl Vinson. Coverage all weekend on SportsCenter. All right, major games look forward to. Number one, Alabama's taking on Mississippi State, Jeff. Alabama looks like they have no weaknesses, but Mississippi State playing the best football they have all year. Their defense has only allowed nine total touchdowns, and Nick Fitzgerald, the quarterback, throwing the ball well the last two games, playing with a lot of confidence right now. Here's the Marty party. Thanks, Adnan. I had the opportunity to catch up with Nick Saban earlier today here in Tuscaloosa, and he told me point blank, the LSU victory last weekend in Death Valley was extra special because of the magnitude of what was at stake. They won the SEC West, hostile environment. People were saying that their schedule wasn't very strong, and they go in there and shut out the number three team in the nation, 29 to nothing. You could not wipe the smile off his face after that game. I noticed it as I was exiting the field. Now moving forward to this week, the Mississippi State Bulldogs come to town, a team that typically gives Alabama fits. And Coach Saban told me today, the thing you fight right now is complacency. Can you stay hungry? Can you be fundamental? Can you ensure consistency? That's what's on his mind as the Tide face the dogs on Saturday afternoon here at Alabama. All right, Marty, look forward to it. 7 East on ESPN, Joey Auburn at Georgia. Yeah, can Jared Sidham and Auburn find a way to beat the SEC East champion Georgia Bulldogs? Come off a game against Kentucky. They ran it for 331 yards, created two turnovers, and dominated that game. Here's Holly Rowe. Thanks, Adnan. Auburn quarterback Jared Stidham told me this week that they really found something against Texas A&M. He said despite their record and how the season's gone, it wasn't just that they won the game, it was how they won it. Down by 10 points with seven minutes to go, they were resilient. And they think that's what they can build on against Georgia on Saturday. For the Bulldogs, they're banged up up front. Their center, Lamont Gilliard, and the right guard, Cade Mays, have been limited in practice this week. That's a problem because as quarterback Jake Fromm likes to say, the Auburn Tigers defensive line has Sunday players. I did ask the Bulldogs how did they celebrate their SEC East championship and all the players told me by doing this. They plan to just keep chopping. They have bigger goals ahead. I love that so much. Chop of wood, focus on the task at hand. Speaking of focus, everyone in Oklahoma has been watching Bedlam as the Cowboys and Sooners converge. Saturday, 3.30 Eastern on ABC. Been a while for Oklahoma State to say last one in Norman. Here's Todd McShay. Thanks, Adnan. Listen, it won't surprise me a bit if Oklahoma puts up a half a hundred in this game. I mean, they're just rolling offensively. This is the best offensive line in college football. You've got two of the fastest players in the nation in their backfield. Quarterback, Kyler Murray, wide receiver, Marquise Brown. I just think against this Oklahoma State defense, it, it really is going to be a track meet. Now, the key for Oklahoma State is just going to be to, to keep up. They have to keep pace in this game. Mike Gundy's offense has got to get rolling and get off to a fast start. They've got to cut out the penalties. And finally, they've got to get a really good game from Tylen Wallace, who I think is playing like an All-American, but nobody's really talking about it at this point. Well, we'll keep an eye on him now. Uh, Jess, how about Ohio State, Michigan State? Yeah, they got back to running the football last week against Nebraska. Michigan State, the best run D in the country. Look forward to that game, noon Eastern on Saturday. Mild, cheesy, and garlic. I thought it was a costume party. Get together already with Tostitos. It can seem unreachable at first. The bar too high, shoes too big. You'll take leaps of faith and fall on your face, but you'll get up. Hard work is 50 sprints before breakfast and another 50 for breakfast. You'll eat it, breathe it, sleep it. The Goodyear blimp doesn't show up for just anybody. So don't be just anybody. Be blimp-worthy. Goodyear. More driven. Thanks. It's like a smart thing. What's the weather? Sunny. Perfect chicken eating weather. How'd you get in here? 
It's time for chicken. Uh, What's the traffic like? Rerouting you to chicken. Okay. Hey, Kazo, order pizza. Ordering chicken. No, pizza. Chicken. Uh, okay, chicken it is. Chick-fil-A nuggets make dinner delightful. Now that's smart. We keep on marching. Do you have a favorite to win the championship? Dos Equis, no question about it. I think the mic cut out. Favorite to win the championship, coach? Nope, you heard me right, Dos Equis. Well, that's, uh, what do they call it? Interest, son. When it comes to finding great deals, it's always good to get a head start. Ho, ho, ho. No matter who you are. So hurry to Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's for huge pre-Black Friday savings. Like a Bass Pro Rogue remote controlled drone for under $30. Redhead Men Suede Mock Slip-Ons for under $35. And Johnny Morris Carbon Light Baitcast Reels or Rods for under $80. Shop in store or online and get free two-day shipping. They're just milling around. You ever see him do this before? No. We should go. There's a storm coming. This wasn't a normal herd. <laughs> Syracuse will get the ball out of halftime after a rampage. Yeah, the final 18 minutes or so of that first half. And a fair catch ends up with the ball in the end zone. And well, we were scoreless for the first 12 minutes of this game, Kelly Stoffer. After that, uh, it wasn't so nice to Louisville. No, and Louisville had four turnovers. Syracuse had 20 points off of those turnovers. And Syracuse is good enough now. They probably weren't a year ago or two years ago to take advantage of it, but this team right here is. Different looking team, huh? No question about it. Offensively, defensively, the best special teams in the country. A full package for Syracuse right now, 13th in the country, the highest ranking in 20 years for the Syracuse Orange. Eric Dungy had his foot on the gas pedal at the end of the first half, even with a big lead. And now Mo Neal, another. Sturgill finally tracked him down. And when this offense is humming, you not only get pace, but you also get a quarterback that can take full advantage of numbers in the box and gash him in the run. That's the difference offensively this year between Syracuse is the run game. They're still obviously able to pass the football, but it's the ability to be efficient in the run game in particular. Couple of Louisville players down on that run, and we'll be back. It's not what champions do, it's what champions don't do. They don't back down, they don't settle, and they don't quit. Except for Cable. Cable. Yeah, you quit Cable. Because we are Cougars, and we don't quit. Unless what? Put cable and switch to Direct TV and get the most live sports in 4K. More for your thing. That's our thing. 1 800 Direct TV. At the Joseph A. Bank Veterans Day sale, save up to 60% store wide. All executive suits, just $199. Our best selling traveler dress shirts, $39. Plus, take an extra 50% off all clearance. From stitch to store, that's the bank way. I am the new DQ Hungry Up deal. Three deals to choose from at four, five, or six bucks with chicken strips, fries, and a mini blizzard. Three deals for the hungry-ish, hungry, and even hangry. Because I'm not fast food, I am fan food. Geico makes it so easy to manage my policy. 
With an app that lets me pay my bill, add a vehicle, or even file a claim, it's not just easy. It's aerobics in a recliner easy. It's not just easy, it's Geico easy. Feel the bird! Do. Do your thing. Be driven. Powerful. Be inspired. Be extraordinary. Turn off the highway and soar. Spread your wings. Mazda. Feel alive. I am the new DQ Hungry Up deal. Three deals to choose from at four, five, or six bucks with chicken strips, fries, and a mini blizzard. Three deals for the hungry-ish, hungry, and even hangry. Because I'm not fast food, I am fan food. The final chapter of the critically acclaimed television event. It's this monumental gathering of people that all share a love of the game of basketball. You're watching Veterans Week coverage on ESPN. Brought to you by USAA. Welcome back to College Football Primetime. It's presented by Hulu. Olivia's favorite building, the Hall of Languages. Here in Syracuse. Mo Neal, a career night for the Orange. Trying to find his way in again. Neal tripped up. Injury for Louisville was a couple of guys, including 22 Yasir Abdullah and Kane Pass together. And Kane Pass was coming up to support that run, and he got bent into a really, really awkward position, and he did end up walking off the field, but with assistance. Dungey breaks a tackle and scores. A flag is in at the goal line. Dungey doesn't look happy. Holding, offense, number six, 10-yard penalty, second down. Remember, J.B., in that first half when Eric Dungy went around the edge to the left once again on the same type of play, and it was Ravion Pierce that had a great block, and Dungy thought he should actually have gotten to the end zone there. This time he got into the end zone, but number six, Pierce, is the point of attack and just grabs the guy right there. All the officials are looking at where the ball is going at that point, and if you're the point of attack blocker and the defense starts to slide a little bit, you simply have to give it up. Louisville first half, 10 penalties. Syracuse now with just its third accepted penalty. And Andre Smith is a great field goal kicker as a redshirt freshman, but kicked three of them in the first half, and that's the one downside offensively right now to Syracuse. Dungy batted away. And a flag comes in. Johnson has been the coverage man for most of the night for Louisville on the passes from Dungy, and will check the marker. Pass interference, defense, number four. The ball be placed at the two-yard line. First down. They've got Smith on the penalty. I did not see number four in on that. I think Anthony Johnson, to me, was the cover guy on Jamal Custis outside. We saw that in the first half. A three-by-one set. You get a single outside. You believe in your guy Custis to win. And I thought it was Anthony Johnson to turn Custis around. Jarvey on Howard with a stiff arm, and down he goes. Jared Goldwire spiked him second and goal. 
Great effort by Goldwire to get off of that defensive tackle position, shed the block, and then run the speedy running back down outside. Howard's kind of a slasher, combination of shiftiness and power, and thought he was going to get in the end zone. The goal wire would have none of it. Dungey wants that score. And he's short. It's going to be third and goal. Offensively, if you're looking for things with Syracuse, it's third down efficiency and red zone touchdowns. And does Eric Dungey get in here? It's very close. Yeah, actually, this might be a touchdown. I would expect the replay booth to take a closer look at this and maybe stop play to do so. As you mentioned this season, they look at every play. Some plays they do stop play. And Dino Babers has walked all the way down the sideline, talking to the, the line judge. As the ball carrier was down, short of the goal line. Previous play is under review. Looked like Dino is going to walk back home to San Diego. He's all the way near the end zone. We'll check it after this. Two Taco Bell icons were meant to be together. Nothing matches the flaming Hot Fritos of the legendary Beefy Crunch Burrito better than the Tropical Lime Storm of the Baja Blast, the perfect pairing for Taco Bell's latest $2 duo. Every time you want the weekend to start on Thursday, a Corona gets its lime. Every time you want a New York Minute to slow down. Every time you don't want a night to end. Every time all you want is this. And every time you can't think of a single thing you need, a Corona gets its line. Do. Do your thing. Flee that nest. Seize that moment. Find your inspiration. Be extraordinary. Spread your wings. Mazda. Feel alive. We can't do it. I'm telling you, it can't be done. We are doing it. It's a done deal. For $40, T-Mobile is offering unlimited and the awesome iPhone XR for every line. So they get the new iPhone XR and the plan for 40 bucks. Ah, the new iPhone XR? That's bananas. What's with the monkey head, Fred? Where's your Memoji? <sighs> my kid's been playing with my iPhone. Little monkey. Taco Bell is giving the biggest game back to the biggest fans, the students, by giving them free tickets to the college football playoff. That means you, yes you, have a shot to take your fandom to the biggest stage. Check out livemystudentsection.com to see how to win tickets. Babers and Petrino waiting for the decision from our officiating crew on whether or not Eric Dungy had scored. Is there indisputable video evidence to overturn? Review. The ball broke the plane of the goal line. Touchdown. Please reset the game clock to 13:34. A senior night present for Eric Dungy. And it certainly was really hard to tell. And you could tell the left shoulder certainly penetrated that goal line, but the ball was in the right hand, and it's all about where the ball is, not where the any part of the body is. Replay took a close look at it and determined that actually it was a touchdown. Five rushing touchdown tonight for the Syracuse Orange. Back to the James Mungro days. Here's the Carrier Dome. Tomorrow, ABC in the Atlantic. Clemson and Boston College, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC and live on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Clemson looks unbeatable in a lot of ways. That's can why. you stop Dylan? Yeah, that's, that's a great matchup right there. You have the best defensive front in all the country, and a bunch of NFL players in 
in that group. And then A.J. Dillon, BC is different when their physical run game is at hand. And Dillon has been banged up, but he seems to be getting healthy. And Boston College needs to get him rolling quickly in that one. How do you feel about birds not having teeth? I never really considered that, but I'll ponder it and get back to you maybe into the fourth quarter. Can't wait. That sound heartfelt. This is going to be a return for Louisville and Hall, and probably not the best choice he could have made. As we take a look at this week's college football playoff rankings brought to you by PlayStation 4, week two from the selection committee, and everybody seems to believe that it's Alabama and Clemson, and you just cancel all the games. And Everybody else, yeah. What do you think about that? How do you feel? And I where's UCF? I don't see UCF in there. I think they're about 12. You would have them maybe about four. I think you might have them in four. We see ours later, but I think it's the top two. Notre Dame is going to remain there if they remain undefeated, and there's some really good one-loss teams at this point in time. Puma pass back in at quarterback as we go downstairs to Olivia. Well, guys, talking about Clemson and Boston College like you just were, Maria Taylor is the reporter on that game. She spoke with defensive lineman Dexter Lawrence, and he says that the line has the mentality that everything starts with them in the meetings. And think, he's a junior, and he says that the focus and intensity as a team is at its best since he's been there. Think of all the success he's seen. And also, no signs of complacency of letting one regular season game go. Like the last two seasons, they're buckling down for this one. They certainly are, and we'll see if upset alert is available for either of those two, Alabama or Clemson. Ryan Guthrie, whose middle name is Chase, and very rightfully so in that moment. It'll be third down. Who's got a better chance of losing, Alabama or Clemson, this week and beyond? Clemson, on the road, temperature may be a little bit chilly, and a run game is what you need in order to have a chance against Clemson. I don't think there's a question about that. I don't think anyone right now has enough horses to score with Alabama. Tomorrow night on ABC, Clemson Boston College. Puma pass. Hit as he tried to throw, and the ball comes loose to one of his own players at the 16-yard line. Covered by the offense, fourth down. I think this is look K is McNeil that ends up with the football and didn't quite know what to do with it. But I think a heads up play by him, but the bad news is I think he got beat on the pressure to begin with. Hey, by the way. We talked about Syracuse with some vengeance against Louisville for that Lamar Jackson game last couple of years. We saw Boston College that same season, 2016, against Louisville. They got demolished. Yeah. How about Steve Adazio and the job he's done to get BC in the top 20? Couldn't agree more. All right, let's take a look at our picks for the college football playoff top four and then some. Uh, some differences this week. Olivia's got Georgia at number four. They've lost. Kelly's got Michigan at number four. They've lost. I've got UCF at number four. Huh. They haven't lost. But you know notably. what they you know what they did do though. So what? They kept winning. They they beat a Two team in a for the first time this season that had a winning record. So you're right to maybe inch them up into the top ten. You you stick with those guys. We are the land of opportunity here in America. If yes, you don't have a chance. To get into the college football playoff, we're doing it well. That's all I. That's all I think. Olivia. Okay, I can't get over Michigan's first loss of the year, and you know I'm having a personal dilemma with throwing Georgia in there, so that's the only reason I have. Hey guys, also right now there's two injuries on the Louisville defense: Kane Pass, the safety, and Yasir Abdullah, the linebacker. That could hurt him here. Oh, Dungey just got belted, kept the ball. You mentioned Kane Pass, Olivia. Great story through Louisville and Bobby Petrino about the Pass brothers, Jawan and Kane Pass. Kane Pass was struggling some academically. He made it, but barely. And when Puma came here and enrolled at Louisville, he was the guy that helped Kane make himself an even better student. He kind of was the guy to inch him forward. And Jason, it was hard to watch because here Kane Pass walked right in front of me to go in the locker room. A big, sad look on his face, but he's looking out at his brother playing quarterback right now and also struggling on the field. You can tell it's just a hard night for both of them. 
tough season for Louisville. Their last win coming against Western Kentucky in mid-September. Dante Strickland for the first time in a while. Sets up third down. Syracuse will not slow down the pace. That's not the idea of orange is the new fast, as Dino Babers calls it. And a pretty light box right now. And third and five is typically a pass, but anticipate wrong. Off the fake throw. Dungey with the draw for Strickland to the 40. So, okay, it's fourth and three. You're up 37 points. You go for it. Why? You're in the place on the field that you typically would anyway. Why would you not? Well, because you've got one of the best punters in the country in Sterling Hoffrichter. Injured player is Dante Strickland. That'll give Syracuse some chance to think it over. The playoff push is on Saturday night. Do. Do your thing. Flee that nest. Seize that moment. Find your inspiration. Be extraordinary. Spread your wings. Mazda. Feel alive. Wandering through secret hills and telling stories round the grill. From lazing out on peaceful docks to raging to a band that rocks. You never know just where in life Corona cans might take you now. Food truck food on city nights with neon burning bright. Digging for Corona cans and coolers full of ice. Never ending summer nights with cold cans of Corona light. You never know just where in life Corona cans might take you now. Howdy folks. For under $20, you can fill up with KFC's 10-piece chicken feast and even have some leftover in case a guest drops by. A motorcycle at the table? I do not approve! <laughs> it's 10-piece, and it's a feast. the value of your home during Menard's home improvement sale. Update the look of your bathroom with Delta products. Pro acrylic material helps provide a high gloss acrylic look that lasts. This high crop bathtub is $448. This high crop shower is $469. Add the perfect finishing touch with this Lakewood bathroom faucet in a chrome finish. $89. This matching tub shower faucet is $139. Plus, a Menard's gift card is always a great gift idea. Save big money at Menard's. are here. Make the most of the road home. Hurry in to receive a credit of up to $3,000 on select models now through November 30th. College football brought to you by USAA. Insurance, banking, and investments tailored for the military community. And Mazda. Feel alive. Some of the brave men and women this week, we honor all of America's heroes who have served and are currently serving in our nation's armed forces. They're the ones that allow us to play these games that we play on Fridays and Saturdays in college football. And we thank them from the bottom of our hearts. It is fourth down for Syracuse of 37. They're going to go for it. Dungy wants it all. Custis incomplete. And a late flag comes in. Chandler Jones thought he had a clean defense. We'll see if he did. Pass interference, defense, number two, 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. Years ago, Syracuse fans would root for Chandler Jones. This is a Louisville version. 
this is, I think, purposely underthrown, and as Custis comes back for it, Chandler Jones just reaches out and impedes the receiver's progress to go get the football. I think that was rightfully called, and that was one of our impact matchups. Dungey to Custis. Oh, got a huge block on the outside from Taj Harris. Just an absolute waxing. That's the ultimate in a bubble screen. You throw it to the inside guy. The outside guy goes and peels off any defenders coming from the inside out. Syracuse, known for the 44. We may break that number very soon. Jarvion Howard spiked down. Johnson came up in the DB position and finished the deal third down. Nice tackle. Yeah, really nice play by Anthony Johnson. It was a power play, and Chris Elmore, who is listed as a running back or an extra tight end, and he's basically an extra guard, even though he's athletic. He led the play. And then Aaron Roberts, the guard, pulled and went over to that side as well. A tremendous play by Johnson. Let's go, Orange Chant starts. And now it's fourth down. What are you doing? went for it on fourth and three from the plus 40 I think you go for it right here as well because I think it in any of the other game situations you would do exactly the same thing it's a run pass down you do have one of the best kickers in the country you also have Custis and he owns a first down for Syracuse that is fish at a barrel right there absolutely and that's exactly why you go for it the offense is made for that you spread it out you throw it to a receiver out wide and he picks up three yards and you convert and move the chains what do you think about people who would say why are you running up the score I think you're running your offense and it's up to the defense to find a way to stop you could have kicked a field goal there you're not down on field goals are you freshman Howard we talked about this in the first half. All I know, and I'm not accusing anyone of anything, 2016, Bobby Petrino hunts 62 on this club. 2017, 56. Yeah. Um, maybe some of that's going on, but this is also who Syracuse is offensively. If you can convert, you do just that. Johnson is injured. We'll check on him back in 30 seconds. Forbidden Fansville by Dr. Pepper. Ramon, we can't. But Julia. We're rivals. I can love you and still hate your overrated school. We have two different defensive philosophies. You're a base for a three cover two, and I'm an aggressive a... three forward press coverage. I get it. But we both love Dr. Pepper. Oh, Ramon. Touchdown! State. Yes! In your face! Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. For tile, wood, and stone, come to the nationwide low price leader, Floor & Decor. The prices are the lowest you will find. Not only did we find lots of options, we were like, oh my gosh, it's so affordable. It's affordable no matter what your budget. I save a lot of money at Floor & Decor. We came in under budget. Way under uh, budget. It's way under budget, yeah. It's really the best pricing. You're getting an incredible product for an amazing price. Why wouldn't you want to save money and make your house look great? I love to save money. Who doesn't like to save money? <laughs> Floor & Decor. You have to see it to believe it. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. You know, Kel, there's no air conditioning in here. I heard that. You're contractually required to mention that on every telecast of a Syracuse game. Uh, they're at 44 points right now, and the legend of 44. It's been retired in 2005. Jim Brown, some great running backs have come through here. Ernie Davis, Floyd Little, among others. And a 1959 national title for Ernie Davis. 61, the Heisman, a career that was too short. And look, oh look, it's even 44 degrees outside. How quaint, and it's 9.34 p.m. Hey, clock, we're trying to build a theme here. <laughs> I think you covered it quite well. Oh, uh, thanks.
Syracuse driving. Are you still mad that their offense is on the field? I wasn't mad. I was just asking you a question. Are you okay with that? The first three times. Dungey over the middle. Who comes up with it? Let's see. It's picked off by Louisville. P.J. and Banasor ripped it away. Custis got his mitts on it, but could not finish the deal. And I think that's exactly another reason you want to go for those opportunities in the red zone is I think Dino Babers wants Eric Dungy to make better decisions and for his offense to finish better overall. And that isn't what it looks like. Too many field goals in the first half, and that's a bad finish, obviously, in the end zone right there as Dungy forced it into coverage. P.J. Ambanasor, the Intercontinental Champion. We need to get you one of those belts. I think it'd look real good. I think it would too. Mm -hmm. You and I would have to wrestle off for it first. I wouldn't want to take charity or anything. I would. Louisville will run on first down. Hey, Olivia. Yeah, guys, that's Dave Churko. I was talking to him before the game, and he said it just keeps things loose and just kind of fun. He did tell me he only has one kilt. It's only for game day. He doesn't wear it during the week, and it's just awesome. None of us can disagree with that. Yeah, talking about Churko, the coach on the sideline for Syracuse who wears a kilt, it was another coach, Sean Edinger, who suggested that this start, and uh, Churko's down there wearing a kilt. Check down, Wilson. The freshman stood up and driven back. I have a proposition for you. I don't accept. I'll wear the belt that you suggested. You wear the kilt. Yeah, fine. You're good? Yeah. I would like to see those legs of yours in a kilt. Really nice of our crew to pop up our names at that moment. <laughs> Thanks, folks. Puma Pass has had a rough night tonight. Six for 13. Under 100 yards, a touchdown and a pick. Yeah, that's a good look for the kilt over there. On third down, flags. Jordan Davis, a tight end on this near side, moved early. Ball start. Offense, number 72. Five-yard penalty, third down. Well, 72 was one of them. 85, Jordan Davis was the other one. A little bit twitchy. And it makes third down a whole lot more complicated. And oh, by the way, have we seen some edge pass rushers out of this Syracuse defense tonight? We certainly have. Robinson, Jonathan, Barry, Coleman. Living in the backfield at points tonight. Third down. Foster creeping up to the line of safety. Now he drops back. Pass. Whipped down by Robinson. I think that three second clock, JB, that we talked about in the first half came and went. Alton Robinson is just going to be a speed rusher off the edge, and the tackle, Becton, hardly laid a mid on it. Dip the shoulder, keep the feet moving, and end up at the quarterback. Mason King skies it. We talked to both Coleman and Robinson, the edge rushers for Syracuse yesterday, and they were reminiscing about their favorite play from this season. And it was a sprint out in the fourth quarter against Clemson. Coleman got a sack because of Alton Robinson. Yeah, and the quarterback right here is using a term that he used earlier in the game. Lasso was Lasso. the word and it meant sprint to this side. Robinson calls it out, and Kendall Coleman gets credit for the sack. I said, you guys are tied coming into this game at seven sacks apiece. Obviously, it's nine now, but that's like a half and half sack there, but Kendall Coleman wasn't giving up a half sack to his buddy Robinson. Oh, no way. Robinson looked like he was pretty happy that you had mentioned it, uh, <laughs> but there was no exchange of statistics. Howard. On the run, and he's cartwheeled back. Olivia? 
Well, Coleman also said something that stuck out to me about the general direction of this defense. He said in the past, guys would question if they're talented enough or mentally able to keep up with guys they had to line up against. He said, I don't feel like that with this defense or this whole team. That's pretty powerful. It certainly is. I mean, the one thing you notice when you talk to him at the same time is Coleman is the guy who's going to talk more. Essentially, we throw out a question that could be for either of them, and Coleman was the first one to the buzzer. He was he was in first. He'd be great at Jeopardy. Well, Alton Robinson deferred to who he called the general, yeah. which was Coleman, right? Out of out of respect. So look at this. Louisville's got nine sacks all year. Robinson and Coleman have 16 combined. You watch the tape of that Wake Forest game from last week. They lived yeah. in the all, Wake Forest backfield. All over the place. That's one of those areas that has improved immensely is the pressure that Syracuse gets defensively. Dungey down the seam and incomplete for Riley. Well thrown and just not a great finish by Sean Riley and he's a very good finisher. Slot receiver works the middle of the field. His quickness gets inside. He creates separation and his quarterback threw it on him. On the hands and Riley knows he should have caught that one. We asked Dino Babers why Sean Riley if you don't like small targets in your offense at wide receiver. He said look he had everything we wanted except for size and you cannot say no to somebody like that. So Riley comes here from Los Angeles to play for Syracuse. That is not an easy catch. There is a flag down. Fitzpatrick went over the shoulder. Flag is in midfield. We haven't had one of those for a while. Holding number 15 of the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Hey, Sunday's Veterans Day. We have Army against Duke. Coach K's number four Blue Devils. They could be number one in the country very soon after what they did to Kentucky. One Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Coach K, former cadet at West Point, 66 to 69 under Bob Knight. Took over for Army, 75 to 80 as the head coach, then to Duke. Look at the baby face Coach yeah. K right there. There's a lot of wins since that picture was taken. How is Duke number four? They just haven't re-ranked yet. That might be the Alabama of basketball. And they beat Kentucky, which is a really talented team. I mean, that's no slouch at all. So it'll be interesting to see what uh, Duke does the rest of the year. But Jim Beheim coaching his son here at Syracuse. Jim always a supporter of the football program. He's here quite often. Always a defender of his guys as well legendary Syracuse head coach through and through a Syracuse orange men back then and now a Syracuse orange he's been on this campus for decades and decades out of a national title 15 years ago now with Carmelo Anthony Puma pass down the middle for Dawkins to the 20 yard line in a 13 Syracuse will play in Moorhead State here at the Carrier Dome so they will change over after this game the football field to the basketball court and Pete Sallow who's in charge of all of the facilities on campus here will once again get like an hour of sleep how long does that transformation take uh, it's a much shorter process than it should be because Pete and his crew are here basically right at the end of the game to start flipping it Puma pass batted away double coverage eventually came for Syracuse Trill Williams waving it off along with Cisco who had a pick earlier his fifth interception of the year 2 2 at will was the intended target but you said it exactly right Puma pass throws into double coverage and Bobby Petrino told us that Puma passes been better as of late getting through his progression seeing the field better and that was not a real good example of that it has been a rugged offensive night for Louisville but the quarterback run has been there Jawan Puma pass to the 44 yard line that's first down number 10 
for the Cardinals. And that's similar ball handling to the one that Puma Pass coughed up in the first half. And I think that's that's due to having more than one quarterback play as well. That's a tough feel for a quarterback. Are you pulling it if you have the right read or are you giving it? Does the running back clamp on a little harder than he should have? And that's all difficult when you're rotating quarterbacks to some extent. Pass has the completion. Fitzpatrick roaming inside the 15. JB, here's a good example of what Puma Pass is capable of. The ball comes out on time, it's on target, and when you are accurate and on time, it leads to yards after catch. We haven't seen it a lot, but you see it right there out of Fitzpatrick. It's a 43-yard gain to Fitzpatrick. Puma Pass over 100 yards now in the air. And the ball came loose again. It looks like Louisville's on it. It is Cardinal football. Kylan Wintner knocked it free. And uh, what do you do to deal with this ball handling in practice coming up this week? You just continue to do it, and a lot of coaches don't even want to talk about it. It's Linwood Foy that ends up getting onto the ball, a heads up by a lineman that was downfield blocking and happened to see the ball bouncing around a place it shouldn't have been. Hassan Hall, the highly thought of freshman waltz is in for a Louisville touchdown. That was not a great series by Syracuse defensively, to say the least, and Brian Ward will not be happy with that outing. Louisville offensively did a, some of the little things better. Ball security, Puma path the ball in the ground. Offensive lineman jumped on it, but by and large, the blocking up front and the reads in the run game by the quarterback, Puma Pass, were better. 95 yard touchdown drive for Pass in 307. We'll be back in 30 seconds. This is an aligner. Well, to be clear, it's an invisible aligner from Smile Direct Club. Our aligners take teeth like these and transform them into those. They discreetly take this and turn it into that. We send your aligners directly to you, and in an average of six months, you could have a lifetime supply of confidence. Join more than 250,000 satisfied grinners who got a smile they love for only 80 bucks a month at smiledirectclub.com. I wanted to give a shout out to my friends and fam family from Syracuse and to wish the very best to Syracuse University. Go Orange! Major Curtis Sherwood, and we thank him and everybody for what they do as we honor our veterans this week. We're on ESPN and across the country. And Ben Brickman, 27 years old, on the Syracuse sideline, a senior. He was a Marine, a couple of tours of duty in Afghanistan. He showed up and he was playing before he got to Syracuse. Coach said well, he's a little bit old. And then he explained why, and the immediate reaction from everybody that was around him was, we got to have him in terms of what he can provide in life experience. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. Having Ben's leadership around has been very important. Hudson Valley Community College first in January of 2014, and now here to Syracuse. Riley on the return, and that will do it. With flags coming in, so that won't do it. In the return, illegal block in the back, receiving team, half the distance to the goal, First down. We will have an untimed down. So before the untimed down, here is the story for Ben Brickman. And you think about it, you're in Afghanistan, you're in harm's way, and you also just don't get to talk to your family that much with those couple of tours of duty. Uh, you've got one or two calls home every month. Yeah, that's and his, amazing. his family just learned 
that you pick up the phone when it rings because you can't miss that call off the satellite phone. And Ben said an interesting thing. You know, he's you talked about it, the two tours in Afghanistan fighting the Taliban. I mean, he was out there in it. And then he's a football player, which was his dream, and he loves the game. And he said his first practice was like being thrown out of a helicopter into a hurricane. A guy who's been in war, but this game of football is complicated, but I'm ecstatic that this young man is getting the opportunity. Syracuse will run it for the final play, the untimed down. When you think of the folks who are overseas and you think of everybody over here, and he's been both. Ben Brickman for Syracuse. A migraine hope. To be there for the good and not so good. For the mundane, the awe-inspiring, the heart racing, the heart breaking. That's what life is all about, showing up. Unless migraine steals your chance to say, I am here. That's why we created Amavig, a preventive treatment for migraine in adults. One dose, once a month. Amavig is proven to reduce the number of monthly migraine days. For some, that number can be cut in half or more. The most common side effects are pain, redness or swelling at the injection site, and constipation. These are your days. What will each one bring? Doesn't matter. As long as you can say, I am here. Talk to your doctor about preventing migraine with Amavig and be there more. Do. Do your thing. Be driven. Powerful. Be inspired. Be extraordinary. Turn off the highway and soar. Spread your wings. Mazda. Feel alive. Barkeep, Bud Lights for everyone. Actually, um, I prefer a nice mead. Barkeep, Bud Lights for everyone and a mead. Is it autumnal? Bud Lights for everyone and one autumnal mead. Is it malty and full-bodied? Because I like it more. Cancel that mead. Bud Light for the many, not the few. And the award goes to Kendra. I gotta go. I gotta go. I'm just sad. I'm just sad. Oh my gosh. I want to thank my mom, my manager, my babysitter, look girl, mommy's on TV. Time to go to bed. Damn, your rudder is ready. My dog walk. It feels like a big win Thank when you. you get a deal like this. Introducing McDonald's new $6 classic meal deal. Choose one of four favorites, plus any size soft drink, small fries, and a pie. All for just $6. You're up 30. They paint the pylons your school color. Welcome back to college football primetime presented by Hulu as part of Veterans Week on ESPN brought to you by USAA. And Dino Babers has the orange playing very well. He is the son of a 20 year plus man in the Navy. Luther Babers, his dad, and Dino was very honest with us. He said we clashed sometimes. His dad has now passed away, but uh, he learned so much about discipline from his father. And, and Dino said to us, look, if he said go right, I went left. I was rebellious sometimes. Sometimes, no, no question about it. But you're right, that's where that toughness and that discipline come for. And actually the love of football. He was on the chain gang as his dad was on the Navy semi-pro team and watched him play up close. Eric Dungy has been a karate kick superstar for Syracuse. And he goes high. 
as he tries to become a Rockette short of a game at Yankee Stadium. <laughs> well, Eric Dungey needs to go high when the defender's going low, theoretically. That was not a real successful dance move by Eric Dungey. And I think his head coach is going to walk out to him and say, what exactly are you up to? Louisville has a man down. It is 92, Malik Clark. At the Joseph A. Bank Veterans Day sale, save up to 60% store-wide. All executive suits, just $199. Our best-selling traveler dress shirts, $39. Plus, take an extra 50% off all clearance. From stitch to store, that's the bank way. What do you get the person that loves to tailgate? How about a new tailgate? This year, turn Black Friday into Buick Friday with special deals on Buick's three SUVs, like this low mileage lease on this Encore Preferred for around $179 per month for current eligible lessees, or get $5,500 total value when you finance through GM Financial. For 10 years, ESPN has been proud to salute America's heroes for their sacrifice and service to our country. Tune in this week for tributes from locations across the U.S. honoring American heroes. Programming is available for streaming on the ESPN app. They're just milling around. You ever see him do this before? No. We should go. There's a storm coming. This wasn't a normal herd. When it comes to finding great deals, it's always good to get a head start, no matter who you are. So hurry to Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's for huge pre-Black Friday savings, like this Cabela's 10-tray deluxe dehydrator for under $100, a master-built Sportsman Elite extra-wide smoker for under $180, and a Bass Pro 30-quart aluminum turkey fryer for under $40. Shop in-store or online and get free two-day shipping. ESPN College Football is presented by Hulu. Watch your football games live all season long on your favorite channels, no cable required. And Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. Up in Watertown, the 10th Mountain Division at Fort Drum. Second year in a row, 60 kids of military families welcomed onto campus by the Syracuse football team, Fort Drum Youth Football Day. And there's always been a partnership in recent years between the Syracuse football program and the folks at Fort Drum. And we were talking before the break about Dino Babers and his father, who was in the Navy for more than 20 years. And you think about the Syracuse coach and the decision he made to come here. He's been very frank about this, that there were some people who said it may not be a spot that you want to go. You may not be able to win here. And Dino Baber said, look, I'm going to do what I want to do. His dad, when Dino told him that he was going to go to Hawaii, he said, I, I did this for all this time in the Navy for you to go to Hawaii. And then Dino Babers tells his story about Barry Gordy and Marvin Gaye and how nobody really thought Marvin Gaye's what's going on was going to be a hit and so he went to a different record label yeah. and made it his story is rife with I'm going right if you tell me to go left down the middle wide open man Nikeem Johnson for six This is a matchup that we talked about in our impact players. The freshman Chandler Jones was going to be targeted regardless of where he lined up. Nakeem Johnson is matched up on him right now, and Johnson just runs 
right by Chandler Jones, the freshman. It's a matter, matter of experience on the back end when you have a bunch of perimeter receivers and also receivers in the slot for Syracuse you can get the ball to and you have an inexperienced defensive back like Chandler Jones, that's where they Time go out. after and Syracuse. that's exactly what Good happened there. Out of the half. Syracuse uses a timeout on the extra Time point. Out. We got all kinds of stuff in this game that you're not going to see normally. What do you get the person that loves to tailgate? How about a new tailgate? This year, turn Black Friday into Buick Friday with special deals on Buick's three SUVs, like this low mileage lease on this Encore Preferred for around $179 per month for current eligible lessees, or get $5,500 total value when you finance through GM Financial. Where he grew up, not many kids with names like Munoz played American football. But in a world full of obstacles, football was Anthony's chance to clear his own path. He pushed his way into the record books and became a legend. Anthony Munoz cleared a path for others with names like his, names like Tony Gonzalez and Roberto Garza. Since 1925, we've proved that it doesn't matter where you come from, it matters what you're made of. Modelo, brewed with a fighting spirit. I'm Dak. If you're like me, you don't get much downtime, which is why I'm shooting a soup commercial while training. Chunky Soup is packed with hearty meat and veggies, so when I do find time to eat, it is oh so good. Campbell's Chunky, soup that eats like a meal. This is how you make hosting the whole family a piece of cake. You do it all in one load with a few additions and make sure you have a spot for all the special ingredients. At the Home Depot, this is how we help you get your home ready for the most wonderful time of the year. This is why. Right now, get up to 40% off major appliances like the Samsung Kitchen and Laundry Suite at the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. Nothing outlasts Energizer Ultimate Lithium. Hey, you can't do that. Can, can he do that? Uh, yeah, he's good. <clears throat> Energizer Ultimate Lithium. It's the number one longest lasting battery. Syracuse is off 44 points. Eric Dungey has been awesome tonight. Yeah, and Eric Dungey has been awesome most of the year, and I think the improvement out of that young man is why this Syracuse offense has improved, and the run game has gotten considerably better. And when Dino Babers' offense, when he learned it at Baylor, when that was really cruising, it was the run game that made the big difference. You spread them wide, you go fast, and then it's the run game. And this is pretty good company right here in that 7,000-1,000 club. He's also got 32 career rushing touchdowns. That's the fifth most in ACC history for a quarterback. He's misfired sometimes tonight, but you can see the spirit on senior night for Eric Dungy as his team has rolled up a grand total of 51. The only shame of this is Mike Cousins and Kurt Morrison had such a good open plan for you out in Boise for Fresno State, Boise State, and you're just not going to be able to see it. They're coming up after us. This season, for every field goal, an extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Hate to interrupt somebody else's open, yeah. but a great, a great game all the time. out there in Boise coming up. There will be some orange and blue out there as well. But the Cardinals, at 14 points, they got smoked by Clemson last week. 128 in the last two games and look we said to Brian Van Gorder the defensive coordinator in our meetings yesterday we said okay so who are the guys for you that are about to turn that corner and he thought for a while and he said there are a couple guys that have gotten better but he didn't really feel like he was loaded right now no. <laughs> defensively couldn't come up with one name let's be honest I got one name for you Kel. Let's have it. Adnan Burke. So you telegraphed it a mile away, JB, but well done. Boise State quarterback huh. Brett Rippon ranking second in the Mountain West, sixth in FBS, 2,779 passing yards this season. He and Boise State get to take on number 23 Fresno State after its best start since 2013, about 20 minutes away from kickoff. JB. 
You talk about a coaching job, Jeff Tedford. Yes. At Fresno State. I mean, that's been tremendous. He goes back home. He was a quarterback there, right? Yep. Goes back home and look at the job that man is doing. He's one of my favorites in this business. He is. That is a great game. If, if you're on the East Coast and have not heard about what's going on at Fresno State, check that game out. Boise State is a talented team as always. As we go downstairs to Olivia. As Kelly was talking about the quarterbacks and trying to stick with one and stick with one's mental capacity, that's what Bobby Petrino told me at half. He wants to stick with Puma Pass regardless of what's going on. He doesn't want to use the walk on Sean, Sean McCormick because he struggled on his first two drives, throwing a pick on his first college pass. And then Malik Cunningham, the redshirt freshman, is out for the rest of the night with an upper body injury. That's too bad for Cunningham. Olivia, thank you. So it will be Puma Pass, it looks like, for the balance of this game. He gets that away, and Louisville with another big play. This is Jalen Smith. He's got a first down across the 40. Look, McCormick comes in against a rabid defense that has edge rushers to the moon. Yeah. His only scholarship offer was to St. Xavier, an NAIA school in Illinois. And his first pass, he's bum rushed. So good luck. Christopher Frederick short corner blitz and got to his throwing arm before he could get rid of it so it wasn't a big sample size but it, I don't think it matters right now who's pulling the trigger Syracuse is blitzing with 51 on the board Cullen got there question is is there intentional grounding yes did not get the ball to the line of scrimmage offense. The ball did not cross the original line of scrimmage. Lost it down at the spot of the foul. Second down. And don't forget, no receiver in the area either. Yeah, that's a great point to make because it one or both of those things. And does Puma pass get outside the pocket? I think the answer is yes. But if he does and throws the ball away, which he can at that point in time, the ball has to travel past the line of scrimmage, as you duly noted or there has to be an eligible receiver in the area. Loss of 16 on the play. Pass, buried again. Kingsley Jonathan came around the corner with Ruff. Ball came loose. This has been whistled dead. Well, Brian Ward told us that they like their matchup defensive line of scrimmage against Louisville's offensive line and this is why Louisville's offensive line just been has been given it up like that most of the year 125th in sacks allowed coming into tonight and it's gotten considerably worse this I'm told by statistician Ed Spita is third and a third of a field he's right and it got worse Well, at third and a third of the field, you expect draw or screen, and that was going to be a screen to Hassan Hall. It's Kingsley Jonathan down. Officials time out. We're going to step aside. Syracuse big. For decades, banks have been getting away with it, charging you excess fees making you wait in line, keeping billions of dollars of your interest. They've been treating you like you're lucky to have them. That's not right. Show them who's the boss of your money. You. Better is out there. Ally, do it right. When you're good at sports, you have a trophy case. And when you're good at subs, you have a deli case. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. <laughs> wow! Woo! Wait, what? Everyone's excited about the Chevy vehicles at the Chevy Black Friday sales event. I could get used to this. Wow. And you will be too when you get 0% financing on our award winning Chevy cars, trucks, and SUVs. How is that even possible? <laughs> now get 0% financing for 72 months on most 2019 Equinox models or make no monthly payments until next year. The Black Friday sales event ends soon. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. It can seem unreachable at first. 
bar too high, shoes too big. You'll take leaps of faith and fall on your face, but you'll get up. Hard work is 50 sprints before breakfast and another 50 for breakfast. You'll eat it, breathe it, sleep it. The Goodyear blimp doesn't show up for just anybody, so don't be just anybody. Be blimp worthy. Goodyear, more driven. This is Dell Cinema Technology. Uninterrupted streaming, brilliant sound clarity, and lifelike color. Experience Dell Cinema on the XPS 13. Get up to $200 off select XPS 13 laptops at Dell.com. There's a reason we recommend you order your sub with the juice. It's good. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Giants Niners, Monday at 8.15 on ESPN. Welcome back to College Football Primetime presented by Hulu. All the folks covering the Syracuse University football game, a well-known media school. Pete Moore, the legendary sports information director, taking it in as well, basketball side. Louisville will punt on fourth and 34. Mason King drives Riley back. He's got some room. Sean Riley's explosive. He sneaks through the gap. Riley to midfield. It's a net of nine. Sports Center tonight following Celtics Jazz and after the buzzer on ESPN SVP. Gordon Hayward's return to Utah. The Titans' secret weapon against the Patriots tonight at College Hoops just underway. College Basketball Sports Center after the NBA on ESPN and the ESPN app. Well, for Syracuse, still no sign of Tommy DeVito, the reserve quarterback. Eric Dungey has played all the snaps so far tonight. That surprises me to some extent for two reasons. You don't want to open Dungey up to some extra hits, but also give the youngster, the redshirt freshman, a little bit of playing time. Sean Riley to the 46. We asked uh, Sean Riley how Jersey Tommy DeVito is. He is from New Jersey, and DeVito and the other Jersey guys evidently walk into the locker room and just <laughs> yell Jersey. I love that. Every once in a while. But you gotta own it. Ground game again, churning for Syracuse, and Howard, the freshman, spiked down inside the 20. It's a 26-yard gain for a guy who wasn't born last time Syracuse was ranked this high. November 1999, Jarvion Howard came into the world. This ball is a little slippery for Dungey, who takes a late lick, and here comes the flag. That was pretty well needless for Louisville. After the play was over, personal foul, defense, number 13, 15-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, it's on P.J. Blue. I think we have another fat flag, but P.J. Blue, I mean, just absolutely senseless and more undisciplined play by Louisville. After the play was over, there are two fouls. Both will be enforced. Personal foul, number 13 on the defense. And also after the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 13 of the defense. Both penalties will be enforced. That is number 13's first unsportsmanlike conduct of the game. First down. One more of those, he's out of the game, but this is it's useless. Yeah, there you see the, I mean, when you just can't contain yourself, I mean, your behavior is so undisciplined and unfocused, and sometimes that's a pretty good indication that a head coach may be losing grip of his team. Howard falling to the five. You get that feeling, Kel? 
Yeah, I mean, discipline and focus about is about the willingness to behave the right way and to play the game well, the game of football well, you have to have that. And Bobby Petrino has experienced kind of the high of highs and right now it's the opposite of that. Howard up the zipper for a touchdown. The flag has come in though, we'll check the mark. Offense, number 60, 10-yard penalty, second down. Yet again, a Syracuse touchdown is negated by holding. And this is one of the few negatives that you've seen tonight is Syracuse has had a lot of things dumped in their lap, and they've been able to take advantage of some of them, but their red zone execution hasn't exactly been buttoned up, and this is a holding penalty by Cody Conway, the second one tonight. Dungy fires incomplete. Gerard Johnson, the intended target. Redshirt freshman out of Miami. And the thing that I guarantee you that Dino Babers does not want to see is for you to get sloppy in terms of what you're seeing out of the other team. Howard chopped out. You'd imagine you kick the field goal here, right? Yeah, I would think so, because I think Dino Babers is tired of looking at his offense out there. Third season for Dino Babers, 15 and 18. Syracuse Bowl eligible for the first time in five seasons. And obviously, Syracuse is going on to a huge win here, but you want to do the little things right. This actually will give Coach Babers and his staff some things to pick apart because as this game is worn on in this second half, you've seen some sloppiness show up out of Syracuse. This is going to be a delay of game on a field. Delay of game, offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. Did you say sloppiness? Is that yeah, what I heard? Yeah, that's what I heard. So look, you're playing Notre Dame next week. Yeah. They may be undefeated depending on what happens with Florida State tomorrow. You can't have this stuff no. against Notre Dame. And Notre Dame will be on the opposite side of the universe from what we're seeing out of Louisville's team tonight. Third in the latest college football rankings, playoff rankings, and a completely different animal in Yankee Stadium next week. Could veritably have top 10 Syracuse against Notre Dame. Last time that happened was November of 1961. And Ernie Davis was roaming the halls. Schmidt buries a field goal from 38. The football facility has been thriving this year. Season. I'm everyone with a case of the dropsies. I just dropped my phone. Can you help me out? Hey, honey, I might have dropped the match. I did. And if I could show up on game day, imagine what could happen the rest of the week. So get Allstate and be better protected from mayhem like me. Right now, I'm being controlled by a guy named Todd. Wrong button, buddy. Got it. You see, Todd here won this exclusive Platinum Xbox One X from Taco Bell. He's a little distracted right now. Throw it. Oh, boy. Todd! Put down the Chalupa! Todd! Grab the $5 double Chalupa box for a chance to win the Platinum Xbox One X only at Taco Bell. Todd! Wait, what? Everyone's excited about the Chevy vehicles at the Chevy Black Friday sales event. I could get used to this. Wow. And you will be too when you get 0% financing on our award-winning Chevy cars, trucks, and SUVs. How is that even possible? Now get 0% financing for 72 months on all 2018 Silverado pickups. 
or make no monthly payments until next year. The Black Friday sales event ends soon. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. proudly offers wireless and TV discounts to military, veterans, first responders, and their families. Visit att.com slash hero. Did you know 80% of all erectile dysfunction meds sold online are counterfeit? That's why we created Roman. Now you can get real, FDA-approved medication prescribed online, delivered to your door. Get your first month free at GetRoman.com slash TV. I'm Adam Van Verken, our college football studios. The second game of our doubleheader will feature Marcus McMarion, Fresno State taking on Boise State. You see his record as a starting quarterback of this Fresno State team off to its best start since 2013 when they started 10 0 during Derek Carr's senior season. I know Kelly Stoffer loves Jeff Tedford. Back to you guys. Amen, Amen brother. Amen. We learned a lot about both of us tonight, Kel. 54 <laughs> 14, your score. Yeah, this is a touchback as we take a look at tonight's player spotlight brought to you by Floor and Decor as the two quarterbacks at Syracuse. Eric Dungy lost his job for a brief moment. Tommy DeVito, the eighth ranked pocket passer in 2017 in the ESPN 300. He was Tua's roommate at the Elite 11 camp. And he's played in six of the nine games. He was the reason they beat North Carolina. Yeah, Tommy no question. DeVito. So. Maybe the end of the line tonight for Eric Dungy. We'll see if he gets a senior send off, how they decide to play it. But uh, Tommy DeVito, a New Jersey guy, awaiting his chance here at Syracuse. And this gets to the 29 yard line. Dino Babers has quite the interesting story of recruiting Tommy DeVito. Dino was in New York City, ready to take in a Broadway show. His family wanted to see Hamilton. It was a little pricey. So they decided to get tickets to Jersey Boys, the Frankie Valley musical. And he had never been to a musical before. Dino Babers. This was while Syracuse was recruiting Tommy DeVito. And the first line of Jersey Boys is, you want to hear the real story? I'm the one you need to talk to. Spoken by Tommy DeVito. He says his name. As we check in with Adnan real fast, what do you got, Adnan? And Tommy DeVito, by the way, also the name of Joe Pesci's character in Goodfellas. Also, just want to include that nugget for you, JB. Uh, thanks, Adnan. Really appreciate it. This is incomplete. So, Dino Babers. Great ad by Adnan. Man. Yeah, he's all over. He's this. all over. It. He's, I, he's paying attention to us tonight. <laughs> Dino Babers immediately in the middle of the show. I'm locked in on every word. There's no doubt about it. More of Louisville and Syracuse with Jason Meddy, Kelly Stoffer, Olivia Decker. Moving over to ESPN News. Now coming up on ESPN Two is Fresno State at Boise State. Good game on the blue turf. Mike Cousins has the call. Enjoy it. From the Cinephile Show, we welcome you to ESPN College Football, presented by Hulu. And to a chilly Boise, Idaho tonight, temperatures south of 40 degrees for the third time in less than a year. It's Fresno State and Boise State. Fresno State perfect in conference play. Tonight they try and do something they have not done on the blue turf. Yeah. <laughs> Pick up a win. Last time they did it was 1984 when this turf was green. Boise State since the turn of the millennium has been one of the best teams at home in college football. Tonight begins a crucial three game stretch for the Broncos as they try and put themselves back into the Mountain West Conference championship game. Fresno State has the front seat to that in the West Division a game lead over San Diego State. And with that, we welcome you here to our perch high atop Albertson Stadium. So glad to have you with us here tonight. My cousins, Kirk Morrison, the two-time defensive player of the year in the Mountain West at San Diego State. And Alyssa Lang joins us tonight on the sidelines as well. Kirk, the stars in this game, the teams, of course, but individually, it's the quarterbacks. Here. 
there are a lot of factors, certainly, including the history of Bobby Petrino and the wins that he's piled up for the Louisville Cardinals. So we will see as the, the year goes on exactly what ends up happening on that sideline. Yeah, and remember that the athletic director, Tom Jurich, who brought Bobby Petrino back to Louisville is no longer there. So that, in a sense, that covering is, is gone. So absolutely a lot of speculation on what happens maybe sooner than later. Puma pass to the sideline, and Devontae Pete flag has come in. We are used to that. Flag is in and hat is off. Usually an illegal touch. Yeah, I think you're right. Receiver number 86 went out of bounds on his own, came back inbounds, was the first to touch it. His illegal touch it. Offense number 86 lost it down at the previous spot. There's a tie to Syracuse with Devontae Pete, who just got called for the penalty. He played down at Aquinas. Everybody's interrupting me tonight, by the way. Like, this is ridiculous. Uh, De Devontae Pete played in high school for Rocco Casulo, whose father, Bob, was a longtime coach here at Syracuse University. You want to jump in, too? Or? No, I was going to give you a lot of room so you didn't accuse me of interrupting you. <laughs> it is field goal time for the Cardinals. Blanton Creaky. From 31. In the ESPN app now with ESPN Plus. You can stream college football season long on ESPN Plus. So start your free trial today by downloading the ESPN app or visiting ESPNplus.com. Great 30 for 30s. Boxing, NHL, podcasts. You can listen to Cinephile there and Ed's podcast, among others. Great stuff on the ESPN Plus app. I know it's a must-have for you. No question about it. Comes in handy often. Here are some games that you can watch on the ESPN app, ESPN Plus. What are you some interested of them. in there? What am I interested in? Yeah. I want somebody to give Alabama and Clemson a game. That's what I want as a college football fan. Can they? Fitzgerald, the quarterback, Michigan, or excuse me, Mississippi State running the football. You know, that would be interesting. I don't think it's going to happen, though. I think the defense that Alabama put on the field against LSU a week ago was, I mean, it was unreal. And then you have that offense that's so difficult. I just don't see anyone giving them a run until maybe Clemson somewhere down the road. Are you at all worried with those two teams? that those young quarterbacks are going to have issues in key spots. That's the one question that hangs out there, but it's also the reason those those coaches, Nick Saban and Dabo Sweeney, went to them. I mean, 56% perfect regular season chance, according to ESPN Sports Analytics for Alabama. Who's it going to be that beats them? Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. But yeah, I think when you get into a rivalry situation, in a sense, all bets are off, and Auburn did beat them last year, so that means something. But this is interesting between Alabama and Clemson. Both Dabo Sweeney and Nick Saban made decisions at the quarterback position to remove two guys yep. that all they did is win about every game they played in. And didn't play poorly. And Kelly Bryant and Jalen Hurts, and but it was in the name of getting better in the past game looking down the road oh, Howard to when had they ripped. potentially would meet each other. Howard had that ripped away. Nice play by C.J. Avery for Louisville. I, I just had to interrupt you because somebody needed to do it to somebody else. So thanks for dealing with that. That's all right. This is a great play by Avery. When you got a guy stood up, it's all about the football, and Avery comes away clean with that one. Big hug over on the sideline for Avery. Syracuse has been a little loose here in the second half. Yeah, you? they have. They've gotten ragged in this in this second half, in this fourth quarter, and that's going to be the talking point when Dino Babers deals with this team. Puma pass, floats it out of the backfield for a Wilson. 
nasty stiff arm. So look, Jalen Hurts and Kelly Bryant lost a combined four games. Yeah. See ya. Yeah. To the bench for one and then see you totally for the other. Yeah, and when you're a head coach, that's the hardest thing to do is to make a decision at the quarterback position for two reasons. One, if a guy has won to the extent both of these guys have, and it's all about winning, right? Yep. Not if we want to, we have a place, a way to get better. And this is how you get better. You bring in guys that can throw the football, unlike probably anyone else in college football currently between these two guys. And so it transforms your offense in the pass game and elevates your program in a way that maybe was the only way to do it. And so far, so good, but you're right. When is that moment where one of these kids blink if they're in that tight spot? And we'll see if it happens. That's the prototypical example of the phrase, life is graded on a curve. You lost four times total. Yeah. You're in like the 98th percentile of all players at your position. And there's somebody better behind both of them for the one and two teams in the country. Yeah, and that's the other part of it is both head coaches, Nick Saban and Dabo Sweeney, they had to handle it properly because nothing affects the locker room like the relationship and the things that are going on in the quarterback room. And so that had to be handled properly in order to keep the team. And I think both coaches were successful at that. Hassan Hall got driven back through the corridor as we tick down to four minutes left. How much do you think those coaches handled it properly? You use that phrase. Well, it's interesting because Jalen Hurts remains and Kelly Bryant left. But I, I think they gave both quarterbacks an opportunity early. And then it was a matter of kind of keeping everyone on board with what you were up to. And at the end, I think both coaches did at least one thing. They made it clear why the decision was made, which was this is what we really think makes everyone better and gives us the chance to do one thing, which is to win a national championship. And everyone playing in both of these programs want to do exactly that. And I think the players in the locker room at the end respected the decision by both coaches. And right now, how can you argue with it? Eric Dungy still in, and the well-named junior running back, Otto Zuccardo. The mascot here is Otto the Orange. And now, the farewell for Dungy. personality coursed through this program when times were down. He played through a broken foot last year, Eric Dungy. He had a concussion in game number two of his career. He has been through the medical and otherwise ringer. And this, his final home game, will be the capper of an undefeated season at the Carrier Dome for Syracuse University. They've only done it in 87, 88, and 01. And Dungey is the guy, along with DeVito briefly, who's gotten a pick. We're talking about Donovan McNabb, who doesn't have some of those records. Otto Zuccardo. Run. So Tommy DeVito takes over for Dungey, and you can see the emotions washing over Dungey. DeVito came in, his first pass was a long throw to Custis in that North Carolina game to get them on the comeback trail. And you think about what this season would have looked like if DeVito doesn't throw the life raft yeah. to the offense in that game. You're going to lose your third. And how about the decision by Dino Babers in that moment? Because that's all about the head coach's decision when you move the quarterback in and out. And to make that decision at that point in time in the game and in the season, that was epic, and it worked out perfectly for Syracuse. So 
Zicardo on the run. Notable, the wide receiver at the bottom of the formation for that play was Ben Brickman, who we were talking about earlier. Two tours of duty with the Marines in Afghanistan, and he gets an opportunity on the field, the senior, to play for Syracuse University in the final day. Fantastic. bringing him some water just in case he was dehydrated from standing at the line. I, I think he's been through a lot more than needing water after one play in a college football game. Well, I was literally getting ready to stand up and start shouting, we want Brickman, we want Brickman. And there he is. I think that's a great move as well. And the sacrifice that this young man gave to our country is unbelievable. And then to pursue his dream. He had to try out, which wasn't an easy tryout to get. And He's, then lo and behold, here he is. He's saying why Hudson Valley Community College first is close to home for him. He served two tours of duty in Afghanistan. Yeah. He to be close to family for a while. So he did that, then came here to Syracuse, tried out, as you said, and a wonderful story on this college football weekend early in November. Zicardo driven down and Syracuse will turn it over on downs. I hope young people at home can appreciate that. I mean a young man that literally served two tours in Afghanistan fighting the Taliban and wanted to come back when that was all over with and fulfill his dream of playing football once again and here he is getting into a game on senior night in this place. 15 yard penalty, first down. Penalty against Syracuse, which got three touchdowns for Eric Dungy tonight, over 500 yards in Louisville this evening. 17 penalties, four turnovers. As we set you up for Saturday in college football, Auburn and Georgia, a huge one in the SEC. ABC Saturday Night Football in the ACC. Clemson and Boston College from Chestnut Hill. And Puma pass. Pass the 20. Is inside the five. First and goal, Louisville. And Jason, one of the things we could kind of put a bow on the 17 penalties and four turnovers for Louisville. And I, I brought up the question is, is a head coach in the process of losing his team when you start to see that undisciplined play? I mean, as many penalties as they had first downs. Four false starts, five defensive offsides. That's just a lack of caring as a player, a lack of focus on the things that you have to focus on. And that's up to the head coach to get that straightened out and the staff that he's in charge of. Touchdown, Colin Wilson. We've seen some fight at points from the offense tonight. The defense has looked overmatched. Yeah, I just don't think the defense has the athletes anymore on that side of the ball. Isn't and that amazing, though? You think about Jair Alexander, yeah. first-round pick. And you think about some of the guys who've come through there in the past, and this has gone quickly south. Yeah, you remove Lamar Jackson is one thing, but Lamar Jackson didn't play defense. What are you doing recruiting on that side of the ball? All of that's about the head coach. Uh, for good measure, a clang shot on what we imagine will be the final PAT of this game. We asked, will the stock continue to trend this way after the 2016 Lamar Jackson game, 2017? It has changed thoroughly and rapidly in this series. Syracuse is now one of the class teams of the ACC, and Louisville looks buried. And I'm not advocating for Bobby Petrino to be fired or not, but the decision making to me is based on whether the decision makers believe that Bobby Petrino can turn this thing around. And to turn it around, you have to A, be able to get the players there, and B, get them to play in a disciplined way that gives you a chance to be successful. And we're not seeing that right now. 
on the roster or in games the way that things are playing out. Now that said, we mentioned this earlier, a number of coaches have told us about Bobby Petrino's genius as a play caller and how much they enjoy watching him do what he does on the offensive side, but this season has been destructible. Three defensive coordinators in the last three years. How do you play good defense if you can't keep a defensive coordinator? You, That's you a don't. question that I need answered if I'm in the decision-making process. How do we change that? If we don't have Lamar Jackson erasing so many mistakes and overcoming so many short falls in our program, what do we do now? And that's what's front and center for me currently. Syracuse has rolled up 54 against the defense. Zicardo. You start with Todd Grantham in that run of three straight defensive coordinators, and you end up here with Brian Van Gorder, Peter Sermon in between. Van Gorder is a really interesting guy. He said, look, if I wasn't coaching, I'd probably just be in a factory. I grew up in Michigan, age 19, looked like I was headed that direction, ended up coaching high school football in Florida, had a great run of it, went to the NFL. Since he's come back to college football, there have been some tough times. He's been fired midseason. Yeah. Notre Dame most recently. But here's a guy who feels like the cupboard's a little bit bare, if he's being honest. Yeah, and it's a, it's a tough business, no question about it. But on the Syracuse side, a man named Otto just touched the ball to close out win number eight for Dino Babers and the Syracuse Orange. Notre Dame looms next week in one of the best seasons in decades of Syracuse football. Their best ACC year by far, Eric Dungy on senior night, does the trick with three total touchdowns. Final score, 54-23 Syracuse. Sports Center is next. For Olivia and Kelly, our crew, I'm Jason. So long from Syracuse. The ESPN app, now with ESPN Plus. Get more ESPN and download now. This is Sports Center. Hey there, what's happening? Welcome to your weekend. Friday night edition of Sports Center. Zuba Mahenti, I'm Michael Leeds. Impressive win yet again for Syracuse and Dino Babers. As a matter of fact, you'll hear from the head coach coming up on Scott Van Pelt Sports Center coming up a little bit later. But right now, we're going to go to the college hardwood. Pretty good matchup between Texas and Arkansas. Veterans Day in the minds of many, which comes on Sunday. Forefront for both of these two old Southwest Conference rivals, one in the Big 12, one in the SEC. We're at Fort Bliss in Texas for the Armed Forces Classic, something ESPN has been a part of for many years now, part of our association on this great weekend for so many. Arkansas and Texas ready to go and Roach for Texas. You got to think about what Texas has been through already, Mike. They basically played one game at Andrew Jones, a returning score, leading score from a year ago return after battling leukemia. Arkansas, back and forth, trying to stay with it. Here we go, 9.4 to go. Gafford, second free throw. That could have made it a four-point game. Roach back the other way. And Shaka Smart's fourth year on the job. Yes! And just like that, with a tick to go, we are tied and headed to overtime. Shaka still looking for that breakout in year four. Many people expected it. Haven't seen it. Ramey, nice ball fake up and in in Texas. Takes the lead. Ten seconds to go. Hogs down two. No. Gafford offensive rebound. Looking for Jones on the wing for three and the win. Wow. What a finish. Texas holds on, hits a three-pointer in the final seconds of regulation to force OT and wins it in the extra session. How about that, Mike? All right, now to the NBA. An erect ankle prevented Gordon Hayward.